I just made a phone call. I got two. Well, I keep a backup of everything. Whenever I do these projects, in some ways I acquire tools that I oh, use yeah. down the road. Yeah. And I still make out then having someone else to do it. No, I haven't got by there yet. Um, yeah, no, it's crazy. I mean, next year at this time, it could be more. I bought a 2 by 4 by 10 regular spruce, $18. I bought the cheapest 2 by 4 at Home Depot that I could find. Just so I could put my level, mm -hmm. so I could level out my pool area. And it was 10 bucks. So oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the only one I could find. Yeah. Ten bucks. I'm like, buy this thing for like a dollar. Yeah. Four bucks. It's gonna be a small one tonight. Put on. Kirk. Kirk White. Supposed to be. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. We'll call the meeting to order. Six o two. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything anybody wants to add? Yes, Dave. We had an executive session for personnel. Did, did you get uh, Therese all the fancy lingo? Okay. Well, I'm sorry, you, I didn't get to you when I... That's okay. This That's fine, Dave. That's not a problem. She has been eating at me for a month now. I oh, need to talk about it. Then you should do that. I agree. Um, the only thing I want... To, well, I can do it under my management report. I just want to update you on shooting range insurance. I actually ended up getting a quote today after I spoke to you. Okay. Session, talk about some personnel matters at the end. <coughs> Therese wanted to just make sure we brought up the, she has some updates on the shooting range insurance under the town manager's report. Is there anything else? Or if not, just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Made it through that. First appointment is at six o'clock. So I did see Nicole here. Do you have anybody else, Nicole, that's going to be attending with you, or are you good to go? It's okay. Okay. <laughs> so one on the show. So um, the floor is yours. Yeah, so you must have received the letter and the documents regarding the purchasing policy. So, you know, the energy committee, we're a volunteer group. We were going through the uh, tasks set to us from the town plan. And, you know, we looked at it and we're thinking, what do we want to see written here for, you know, if there's 100% turnover, if none of us are here today or tomorrow, um, you know, what do we want to leave behind with language guidelines for purchasing? Um, and, you know, keeping in mind that just every purchase we make is an opportunity to upgrade our energy efficiency, make that shift um, any way we can. So that is where we were coming from with that. Um, and at this point, we're um, asking for input from all of you um, who are looking, have already seen the purchasing policy and make purchasing decisions. Sure. No, I know. I mean, I, I know I read through it. And, I, and actually, Teresa and I talked earlier. And um, I mean, I, I think it's a 
I think it's a good idea to, you know, it may not always work the way we want it to, but I think it's a good idea to somehow incorporate into our policy, uh, you know, looking at the different alternatives that we have when we are purchasing whatever it might mm -hmm. be. It might mm -hmm. be uh, a new town garage, and ha at least at least having the ability to, you know, look at, you know, are we potentially doing solar or wind or is there any type of power like that? Or, you know, even though we may or may not because of cost, but you know, if we're purchasing a truck, you know, here's the standard specs for the truck, or here's a truck if we bought biodiesel. You know, at least at least we're making an honest effort, even if costs maybe overrule. You know that type of thing, but at least you know, kind of looking at some variations of it. I don't really. I was trying to figure out exactly because you always want to build your policy so that you can work with any policy without being 100% handicapped on it. So it's kind of like, how would that be in there? Like you said, if um, if none of us were here, you know, and it was a totally different board, totally different audience, and you know, how would that go move through? But I thought it was a, at least in my opinion, I thought it was a good idea. Because um, there's many things that we do purchase, big and small. Um, yeah, I did make a couple of changes just that I'd asked for. I think I sent those to you just when will to May under one, under energy efficiency. Whenever possible, consideration may be given to the amount of type. Of, instead of will be given, I put may be given. And then under purchasing authority, purchasing agents shall try and procure supplies. I put that in there. Um, my only concern, frankly, was just uh, that, you know, and I think I asked you about that, you would, you maybe I want to give you a chance to talk about it more, the vehicle purchase request, the alternate fuel report, so you're thinking that could take one to three hours to fill out. Oh, yeah. Uh, it depends on who fills it out. Right. Oh, that, that's my concern, because I don't know who's going to fill that thing out. Mm, yeah. I, I, not, well, we're not here, won't be here. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> But, and I and I'm not and Alan is on right. time, so I'm not. I don't have anyone on the equipment committee necessarily to designate to, you know. So I'm not really sure. I guess maybe that's a group effort. Maybe it's maybe it's Alan and I, I guess I really don't know, frankly. Yeah, I'm and something sure that's actually good. pretty exciting um, is a lot of that was modeled after um, like a draft for the town of Hartford. Yeah. But recently, the town of Thetford passed a Green Fleets policy. And it's, it would be like a policy that would solidify that document, but it might make that document like obsolete. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that I just, they just passed last month, so it's after we'd already written this. Um, and it's a one page, just pretty much a vehicle procurement policy. Um, and it covers
$1,000 more. There's just no way we can currently manage it. Now in a few years, maybe, I don't know. And that's, oh, what did you say? Well, I was just going to say, well, two things. Uh, Ford just came out with an F10 that's electric. Yeah. And they're having it as having much more power than the comparable gas or diesel. Um, Is it similar things, in price? No, it's more expensive, but don't forget you don't have to buy fuel. And you have very different maintenance costs. Right. Because you don't have to maintain that gas or that diesel engine. Um, but you still have to charge it. You, so still, you, have, you have to charge it, so there is electric. But those, those costs need to be factored in oh, sure. in any purchasing decision. I don't know. I don't know how that shakes out, and I'm, uh, I don't either. but I, I do think it's worth asking the equipment committee to really look at seriously and to see how much more it costs over the life of the of the, the investment, mm -hmm. rather than you know it's an initial outlay. But how much of that do we get back in savings over the time we use it? Yep. Uh, I think that's a question <coughs> that needs to be asked, if not for this purchase, but at least down the road. Right. Um, and I would, uh, I like the word uh, will when it's preceded by whenever possible. The whenever possible is a wiggle phrase right. that, that it gives us an out, but it says that if, if it's possible, we're committed to doing this by keeping the word will. Right. But that's my, uh, the other, and in the second, I would precede that whenever possible, that we will procure supplies, et cetera, being conscious. But I want the wiggle room, but I don't want it so much that we can, we or those who succeed us can just ignore it. Right. It's, it's a balance. All right. Well, I have a, oh, go ahead, Dan. I, I think also the, uh, there's a lot more to buying what the vehicle than anybody here has talked about, and that is uh, how do we use a vehicle in the town? usually in a harsh environment. There, I don't care whether they're gasoline or electric, there are motors. Those electric motors are usually in a, in a position to be uh, near or having uh, salt, sand, whatever. I mean, you really gotta look at what could happen to this vehicle. That electric motor goes, you don't, you, you don't just drive it home. Um, number two, uh, I don't hear anybody in the industry at all, talking about the infrastructure in the United States of America for the amount of electricity we can provide. When you tr start charging these vehicles, you're gonna have more electricity. I mean, there's, a, there's states in the country that already have brownouts regularly. If all of a sudden you dumped half the gasoline cars with an electric car and got it charged, and it'd be black. I'm sure of that. Uh, Vermont doesn't have an overabundance of electricity. So I don't know what's going to happen when we go from, I don't know what the small percentage of electric vehicles is to a higher percentage, but it's a consideration. And the third comment is when you talk about the fact that we are, the vehicles, uh, transportation is a, what do you say, 45% of our carbon CO2? Talk with this, this, this committee and say, you know, what are we doing with our forest? The forest is probably the best place to absorb carbon. So if we can, okay, we're going to cut this, but also we're going to save some forest or, or regenerate and make it a, a better forest so that it can help. Because no matter what you tell me, at 20 below, I get my electric F-150 and I get downtown and then I'm screwed. I can't get home. Well, I think, you know, I, I think, you know, it does occur to look into or having something, you know, in the policy where, you know, when we're looking at it, it's kind of like the same thing as saying, 
you know, you have a purchasing policy, so you need to get three quotes from, you know, three different vendors, you know, to have comparisons. And I, you know, I think if one of that could be a, you know, one, you know, if we're getting, if we're gonna buy a new truck. Now, I know sometimes it's, okay, this is the last truck and they have it on the, you know, the yard type deal. But in some of the longer thinking parameters, if maybe we could say, you know, be nice to have one that, you know, at least a quote from an energy efficient or, you know, whatever we title we label it, just so that we can look at it. Maybe the town at that time is in a position to buy something, or maybe the infrastructure is in a position that we could buy something, or, or maybe not, you know. But at least I think what the energy committee is, from what I see, is at least they want to have the option on the table to at least the board or whoever the board is going forward to kick it around. And, you know, I will know, you know, working for a very large company and we have, you know, about a thousand pieces of transportation floating out there that, you know, a lot, what's, what's very difficult is to be able to acquire these type of vehicles takes quite the infrastructure. Uh, it's very difficult for a small identity to, like, have, you know, a uh, compressed natural gas truck, right? I mean, you've got to have multiple of those and be able to have maybe an on-site distribution to fill it, you know, so it becomes mm -hmm. like a big, big thing. It's difficult for like a small municipality where right. a big company like mine, you know, they may say, okay, like Casella's, for instance, a lot of their trucks are set up on compressed natural gas, but they also have their own compressed natural <coughs> gas fill-up area, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where here, you know, in Bethel to have compressed natural gas truck would acquire a lot of infrastructure for one vehicle, you know, for two vehicles, so. Um. I might be able to um, just add something there. Uh, a little over a year or so ago, I had to get a new truck and I had wanted an electric truck, um, but they're not out really that much right now. So, but I poked around a little bit and I remember seeing in consumer reports, um, it was like a chart on cost of ownership for different EVs to comparable vehicles. And so that might be a good starting point, sure. at least for you to kind of take a look at. Oh, and I think it's just kind of coming up with the right wordage in the policy to just at least get it on the table so that we can recognize it's an option. The one, the one that I was looking at, Chris, was the, the criteria for bid selection. Mm -hmm. At number four there. Yeah, that's. I don't um, know, how do you? What is it? I'm not sure how. How, how do we demonstrate that? How do we demonstrate that? Is there a form that we'd have to? Have you have heard them? of a B corporation? What's that? A uh, corporation that's certified as a B corporation. Oh. Um, sometimes they'll register um, under the certain certification, and it's the the, re the reason they designate themselves as B is because their primary purpose is not to the shareholders mm -hmm. is to the stakeholders. Um, so there's just a separate designation. And within those companies, you'll find goals. And so, you know, everything else is held constant, but you have a B Corp that has a goal of reducing carbon emissions. Um, that would be something that you can see is clearly uh, beneficial to the climate. Uh, I know other, you know, I got kind of thinking through this and I know some things are not practical for our small town and some things are, but, you know, I know one thing at our company, and usually, you know, large companies, it comes down to cost, right? You're trying to cut cost, and, and if you can cut cost and make things more environmentally friendly, then obviously that's a win-win, right? And I know one thing that we look at at our company is idle time. So, you know, idle time is very costly, but at the same time, there's a lot of, you know, CO2 that's being emitted when you don't need to, right? I mean, those are, you know, yep. things that, you know, maybe the town, you know, I'm sure if you go out, you'd see the pickup item or one ton item, you know, I mean, those oh, sure. are things that you can see, and obviously it's hard to track because we're just a little town, and you can't really purchase thousands of dollars worth of software to track one truck, but, you know, those are all things that could definitely help. And, uh, yeah, I'm not opposed to number four, I just wish there was a word in there that's a piece of it, and not, like... <laughs> I, I, I guess it's just one criteria, so we could look at it and it wouldn't necessarily stop them from getting the bid. It's just something for us to look into, which I'm fine with. Um, you know, for me, it's all about the money. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, that's just sometimes what it comes down to. That's my job. And uh, so it's all about the money. But um, I'm not opposed to that because it would be one, now that, you know, I'm concerned about how we make them demonstrate it, because of that I just don't know. Um, but I'm not opposed to it being one of the criteria because it's one of several. But how we make them demonstrate that is what I don't know. So that's what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Besides them being a B Corp, any ideas? Or is that something the Energy Committee could maybe look at and let me know? It's like, uh, definitely something we could look further into. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is our annual goal, and it's June, so yeah. we have plenty of time to keep looking yeah. further. Yeah, that would be great. Just some ideas would be really helpful for me on, on if, if the Select Board incorporates this, that at least so I know what it should be looking for. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I just need your help, so that would be great. And we'll look into it, and if it's, you know, finds like it's too vague to really do that sort of thing, then, you know, we'll, we'll let you know if it's just right. kind of. Mm -hmm. So do you want to just debate, just like we're kind of, once you guys have that information and. Um, yeah, if you want to like revisit it, kind of just want to revisit it, or do you want to adopt the first two? I know that um, Farron is up next, so I don't know if, like, what you want to do. I don't know, I mean, what does the committee think? I mean, you know, it might be nice to have a final draft of the, all the bullet points and you know, then we could either approve it or not approve it as one document rather than do it in pieces of it. Is that what you're talking about? Do it. Yeah. yeah, I'm just wondering if you want to do it all at once. So there's no downside to waiting another two weeks or whatever? Yeah, yeah or for a month or whatever. A month or whatever. You just let me know. When you get it, then I'll add you to an agenda. And if we have a chance to take a look at that FIDS uh, oh, yeah. forum, perhaps. I could you know, see if, uh, and maybe I can send that uh, green leaves that hurts to you. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing it. See if there's something that sparks something. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll just make a note that um, once I hear from you, I'll reschedule once I hear from you. Yeah. And I just want to make that a note. I definitely heard the topic of timeliness um, come up a lot. And I, you know, over, I, I think I like kind of had like a climate change realization when I was like, 20, and it really blew my mind. I was like, oh my goodness, this is, we got to do something now. Um, and I've definitely quieted down that enthusiasm over the years um, and really want to focus in on what I can do and what we can do. Um, and there's so many external things going on, but internally, here within this municipality, we can really hammer down our you know, policy as far as we can even if we can't purchase something, um, opening up these discussions mm -hmm. and just having building <coughs> discussion into our procedure at certain points, remembering to evaluate the alternatives. If we build that in now, five, ten years in the future, we are going to be ahead of the game on it when things come out. Um, and that's that's really saying something for a small uh, town like Bethel. Mm -hmm. We're usually a few years behind, and I think in this case, we're a little ahead, and it's a little scary, um, but we're going through it together. So, I appreciate everyone being yeah, here tonight. Yeah, that's great. No, you're yep. right. Great. Thank you. Thank no, you. that'd be good. I'll look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, scamming at that first thing. I'm curious about that. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. I, I'm I like, what page? Like, I like it. it sums well, it up, and it's good. So that, I mean, I'm well, that was going to be a question that I had when I was looking through it. Is, do you have any, any other, like, municipal any municipalities that have adopted something similar, you know, like it's, it's so much easier, like, if you had, like, I don't know, make it a town of Woodstock or something, then at least we could see it and see what kind of language they used in yeah. their policy. Yeah, well, the neat thing about that is maybe what we do is, I, I like that if we see it and like it, we could always pull vehicles out of the purchasing policy, so the purchasing policy is the purchasing policy, but then you have a separate policy for vehicles, so depending what that person said, I'm, I'm really interested in that. I love yeah. it when other people, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Somebody yeah, else put a lot of brain power into this. <laughs> and we were stuck between like separate policy or to integrate. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of what I saw was like just collaborating with someone who does similar stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like research level. So it was, they shared it with me, but they're like, just kind of keep this 
to yourself. Um, yeah. But I could, I could forward it to you, Chris, if you like. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, when we went through the trash ordinance, for instance. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We, we kind of looked to see what was out there, and we <clears> took kind of a collage of pieces, and yeah, we like this, yeah. and we like that, and we kind of put it together in and hours. Yeah. yeah, it may be the same right thing on. if we had a couple of examples where we could say, I really like the language here, and we can incorporate that, or, you know. Yeah, I yeah. like the idea. Yeah. Of and that's where the classes. unprecedented nature of it really yeah. is kind of a barrier. Yeah. Because there's, we might be the people who are making maps for other people to pull from. Right. Um, yeah. And I looked at Randolph's, because, you know, they said they, the energy committee had gone through it, and there was nothing energy efficient mm. in there. So I don't know what yeah. But we got to do better than that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I like the yeah. idea of maybe doing separate because a purchasing policy covers a lot of stuff, but maybe vehicles, it's a huge purchase. It's separate. Maybe it's a separate thing. I'm not opposed to that. I kind of like that idea in a way because then it tags that form and, well, send me Thetfords and I'll let you, well, you and I yeah. will email. That'd be great. I, w I would also like to see in what, in the consideration, <laughs> our items to consider would be operation and maintenance costs over the life as well as the purchase price uh, and um, hidden costs. In other words, if, if what are the costs that we're putting off that somebody's going to have to pay for down the line even if it's not directly in the purchase of this particular vehicle? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm... That makes sense. Like the cost of an option plan. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, you I mean, know, we hopefully don't get there, but um, I, I'm teaching the is, is there a cost in terms of providing more electricity? That's, that's a cost that needs to be considered, but the alternative is also what are the health costs of continuing to pump uh, carbon into the air and what are the long term costs for for us you know, we only a small community but we can do our part in my opinion well, I think I, you know I think that the biggest step here would just be just getting another option on the table right so I mean right now most of our purchases are usually like we'll talk about the one tonight is, you know, they're mostly like there's a truck at a dealer that's left, you know, type deal. You know, there's not yeah, plan B or C, market. you know, right. type right. deal. But maybe on some of these other things, there could be at least a, you know, whatever we title an energy efficient option, you know. Mm -hmm. Sure. That it may be, it's there so may hard. not, but at least it, it's an option. And then whoever the, whoever the equipment committee is at that time or whoever the select board is at that time could weigh that into their judgment yeah. when they make a mm -hmm. determination on to buy or not to buy or and you can how much to spend or, too. you know. I mean, it's not hard to ask sure. the dealers if, like you said today, it's not hard to ask the dealers if they have yeah, more they, energy efficient. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, like something. at the bigger level, like stuff that we would buy, yeah. the, the trouble like, like we have at my work is, is serviceability. Uh, you can buy them, they're a little more expensive, but if it breaks down, it's not as easy as calling up the mechanic you always use. You might have to get okay, somebody from a distance, well, you know. Saying, yeah. Yeah, so some people, of those things people become learn how challenging. to service Priuses pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, I, yeah, or, or I mean, some that'll things happen. just aren't offered, you know. So, but, but at least it's, it's basically what Nicole wants is a seat at the table, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's have an option at the table that at least we can weigh in on and make a determination if if we want to move that way or, or not move that way. I think that's yeah, I think it'll an be honest good. request. And, and yeah, well, Nicole and I will, work, work she'll send me that, we'll work yeah. together and then we'll schedule it for another meeting in the next month or so and, and um, to get her back and then we can mm -hmm. incorporate it into one policy or decide like here's one purchasing, here's a vehicle. And so yeah, no, if you don't mind sending me the efforts, I'd love to read it, so. I will, sounds Thank good. you so much. Thank you everyone yeah. for yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's a thing. It's always changing. Well, have a good night. Thank Thanks, you. Nicole. Thanks, Take Nicole. care. All right, Theron.
So yeah, so they're in the pocket. I sent them to the attorney who did, you know, did such a good job. He hadn't made any just a couple tweaks. That was it. He was great. So these are the landowner agreements with no lotto GW Inc. I had to go to the Secretary of State's website to figure out what is their actual name. So I, that's how they had registered. <laughs> so it's it's them. It's uh, David Bergeron and Mandy Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, Robert Tracy, right? There was just, was there just three? Right. Right. All right, so three. So the town attorney has reviewed them. We've done one other prior with Dennis Wood, right? Dennis Wood, right? We did one with him before. And um, so if you don't have any questions on the landowner agreements, um, then if you made a motion for me to sign both, and I can get them signed and get them to Farron, and you said you would take them to get the landowner signatures. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Okay. Is there a possibility that area seems to be relatively flat? Is there a possibility of having that be handicap accessible? We talked about that when we were out there in the field. Right. Right, I understand. So, But if that's a possibility down the road, a wheel, motorized wheelchairs could be using that potentially, and that would be a motorized vehicle that's not in, that would be excluded according to these contracts. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to read, I think, what another problem might be with the um, Carlos Meadow, the River Conservancy easement prohibits motorized That makes sense that there would be an exception. I can't imagine that they. So where, where does this happen? So where the existing school athletic fields are, the idea, the concept map. Is the map included in the packet? Okay, no. So it's basically just going to be a single track trail initially that goes around all the ball fields and then goes out uh, the ball field that's actually on Dennis Woods property behind where he currently has the mm -hmm. office. So you'd go in down the entrance to the ball field? Yeah, that would be how you'd access if somebody wanted to park down there and walk, or maybe at some point you could attach the two sides of the road since there's trail systems on each side or, or potentially will be. Um, and then it crosses, it basically follows the river mm -hmm. um, and then makes a, a loop or a lollipop on the Carlos Meadow portion of the, the uh, system and then comes back. So it's kind of two loops. And initially our thought was to get it established, just to flag it. We walked it, it's not going to be a lot of work. We're talking about probably a day's worth of work to properly mark it, you know, put a, a trail bed in that people can follow, and then encourage use, which will obviously make the trail uh, better and better. But down the road, I think what you suggested, June, is, is certainly a possibility. I just, I just wouldn't want us to sign in to something that we couldn't make that exception. Right, but he, I mean, this is where it could be changed at, at any time. I agree, and I think, I mean, we, you okay. know, the town attorney looked at it, so I think if he felt we were just, you know, <coughs> excluding someone, and this is not the first one that he judged that he would have, I think he would have said, you know, Therese, you can't, but I'm happy to email him and Claire, we could, you could always move forward with it now, and I can email you and clarify, so if we do have to make another agreement, we could amend. But I can double check with David Rue, but I think he would have said, you know, said trees. You can't 
you know, well, <laughs> um, have excluded, but I, and I will follow up with that. Just I think that's a good point. The intent was to, you know, because we're dealing with private property, I'm um, sure that people are going to turn into a dirt park racetrack or something. Or to the yeah. Back there mm -hmm. anyway. yeah, so yeah. I'll ask them a motorized <coughs> wheelchair. Just something to put in your minds, um, if it's not already, because I know you're you're on part of the planning committee for the the new accessibility grant that we got, but getting that piece of land in part of the walkthrough will make you more eligible for grants that then come available. But I think if you missed that, and even if the trail isn't 100% there and done, if we missed it, then it, that piece of land wouldn't be as eligible as some of the downtown stuff. And I think it very much fits with what the grants you know, sort of said they want to look at in the spacing of, because it goes all the way to the school. And so it kind of captures that side of the road as well. So I just, just to kind of keep it in mind as, as that grant rolls out and we start doing that planning, keeping that parcel of land, because I don't know if it was originally written into the grant. I'm, my brain is saying it wasn't. I'm looking at you because I know you've, you've done some of the- That was something I was paying attention to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think we can, we have that room to broaden the scope of it mm -hmm. because it hasn't been set yeah. in stone yet. It's kind right. of a shame Nicole left because right. she's kind of the person yeah. to put put the bug in her uh, ear on right. it. But yeah, I'm hoping for that. Yeah, because that that would be great to make right. that it accessible. Yeah. And I know the school is already excited to you know you guys are working with Emily, so you know, but the right. school is already excited to use that parcel of land. And so if there's also ways to partner with the school on accessibility pieces. That'd be great. And we, it is something that we talked about in the early phases of planning the trail and, you know, it pretty much came down to monies for, you know, saying we just can't do it at this point. So let's, you know, get the trail and establish the trail and, you know, see what we can do in the future. Where, where is, where do we cross in the lot of GW? There are parcels on both sides of the roof. Googling to see what it mm -hmm. says a bit more as we have coming out of all fields on the front for years. Most of the ball fields on Dennis Woods, but I believe they have the option to purchase that piece of you know, first option if they're going to come up for sale. I'll take a look though at the um, river easement there and double check what it says about the handicap there. Yeah, I'm just looking to see if I can find something. Um, this is from the Agency of Natural Resources. I mean, one would think that the motorized piece of it is more, like you are saying, the recreational yeah. type well, vehicles. I, and not I, I so understand much. what's yeah. intended. I just don't want to have a, an unintended consequence. Yeah, this is, this is Agency of Natural Resources policy, use of mobility devices on ANR land and it just says wheelchairs shall be allowed on all agency lands open to pedestrian use wheelchair so I do know that we discussed that with Steve oh did you okay good okay yeah I'd thank you right, yeah. Yeah. yeah like Chris was saying you know we, it's always been you know this would be an evolving changing thing mm -hmm. and So you need a motion to uh, approve. Yeah, just a you motion to motion. sign. A motion to authorize me to sign. That'd so, be great. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. And then you wanted to do an update on the main forest. Yeah, I actually have one more little point on Carlos Meadow, actually, while we're there.
you have a recommendation and some wording for those signs? Because if you do, just email me. Alan's burned through his sign budget for this year, but it starts mm -hmm. up again in July, mm -hmm. and he's going to be ordering a couple signs. So if you have some language, if you give me a kind of a vague idea what you're looking for, I can look at the MUTCD standards to see what we've got for choices. But if you give me some hint what you're looking for, um, Alan will be placing a sign order. Um, probably when his new budget starts. So. One of those like smile you're on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Get off. Stop <laughs> now. Turn around. Well, that field was used, you know, the kind of the snow machine truck was fizzled for a long time. Uh-huh. And, and I know there was some folks here this weekend that were running um, ATVs. For the, you know, it was, a, it was a family gathering and they were out there with the ATVs. But it, but it was in the snow machine truck. Right. So it's a kind of popular launching point. Tracy's and come up through there, right. to bachelors and mm -hmm. up toward bachelors and then up the hill. Yeah, yeah. Sam. Right. That is true. And as part and part of the easement, the snowmobile trail is going to stay there. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, they I did notice that they didn't like go across Carlos Meadow. They just scooted across. So. Yeah. But they did travel through the wetlands this weekend. And that was, that's from a, an ATV vehicle or a... No, there were a couple. I actually saw it at two points. Yeah. 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 It was a four-seater. I saw one yeah. heading home. I think it was Saturday night even. The boys and I were swimming and uh -huh. they were pulling out of the Davis road. And headed down to the four feet long. We were crossing off the field directly across from the trail park. Yep, I know what you mean. Oh, yeah. huh. And if you look, you can see the extensive tracks through the wetland and out to the left. Hmm. If someone was going to repair, is there a bridge out there or anything so that vast or somebody would need access out there to bring a vehicle out there to do any work or not? No. I wasn't sure. No? Not, not that I remember. Okay, I just wasn't sure. I was just asking. No, but, all right. You mean as far as the wetland? You know, I just yeah. mean on Carla's Meadow, you said you're going to share it with Vast, and then I wasn't, and, and I wasn't sure if there was any, you know, Vast would do repairs on their trails or, or on bridges or anything. Is there anything it's like that out there? No, okay, part good. Of Vast, I think. There would be no need to bring anything else. Okay, good. Actual Vast trails. Okay, so, that's what I wasn't yeah. sure. You know, sometimes so they have to access. Right. So, all right. So we They run the groomer out there. Yeah. Yep. But there should be no need this time yeah. here from anybody. No, I wasn't sure. I just didn't know if there was, I'm not sure of vast infrastructure out there, so I was just curious. But yeah, just send me an email what you're thinking and I'll add it to yeah, get down for his thinking. list. Sure. Yeah. And um, just tell me where you want it to. Right. <laughs> And so for the community town forest, um, you know, we talked about the timber sale, and it's come to our attention that there's quite a few things that we want to um, research and gather some more data on, and that a timber sale most likely will not happen this year and maybe next year. Um, we were trying to contact uh, Vermont's climate forester. Vermont's the first state to climb for us there. Oh, wow. Forester. So we're trying to contact her, get her to come down, hopefully, and um, see what she has to say. And we were looking into getting an inventory for plants. Um, the county forester, A.J. Follinsby, his resource assessment was mostly for timber. He did include some plants, um, but it was mostly timber. So you know, we're just trying to you know, cut down the bases and make sure we have all the information before we make the decision. So it probably will not be happening this year. And one thing I want to confirm is the proceeds from the timber sale coming to the Conservation Commission um, earmark for trail use. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that, you know, is decided on that all the proceeds after road repair coming to the Conservation Commission. So after any
any costs that the town incurred, whether it's legal to get easements or road or anything like that. So basically, once the town itself is made whole, anything after that you're requesting to be deposited in the Conservation Commission Fund. Is that something you need a motion for? You would, yes, if you're going to decide that tonight, yes. I think I'd mentioned it in here that, yes, I'd said, um, told them the cost of any road parking areas would be reimbursed. And then I thought about any legal, because we were doing these, and I'm like, oh, if there's yeah. any easement issues, we would need that. And then I said he'd like the select board to put the proceeds of the timber sale into the conservation fund. So, yeah, it would. So then I got thinking about after doing this, I'm like, oh, if we had any legal or other issues, you'd want the net proceeds. Is that, is that a variation from any existing policy that covers timber sales in town forests? I don't know. I mean, you, I don't believe you, you don't have a policy really on it, and you'd have the right anything. over your any timber sales to do with it, you know. I don't know if there was anything existing that would be... Not that you have in Bethel. Not, a, not existing policy that you have, no. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I certainly can do a little research. You don't have to make that decision today since they're going to put the sale off. I, we can yeah. certainly... I could do a little research if you want. I'm happy to do that. It's up to you. I can take a peek if you'd like. Yeah, I'm I mean, not aware. The of only thing that would have been tough in the past was, you know, prior to us starting the the fund for them, because before they just had a a lot of amount they could put in there in every budget. Where now, now that fund can you know revolve. So, you know, it, I guess now it makes more sense that it could and maybe shall should go into that where prior it would have just went into the general fund right right yeah it, or, or you know because they could have put it you know unless you earmarked it to do something that same year you know mm -hmm. it would have been wasted money well not wasted but it would have been money that would just went undesignated fund that we never had anyway so yeah we went to pay something else but on the same token if the cost to do all the improvements and, and legal stuff doesn't meet the cost of the timber sale then the town would absorb that difference? Sure. Have to absorb the difference. Yep, you would have to, yes. And I'm not really, I, yeah, I can't imagine that. I'm not sure how what the sale, the anticipated sale dollars are. It's probably hard to project with the price, way prices are. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, somewhat. AJ did give us a ballpark of eight to ten thousand dollars. So depending on the road improvements and the, all that, you could go, you could right. go through that. And he's um, looking yeah, now at a right, different, yeah. And you're looking at the different access now. So I think, you know, that would be, and, and I think that's where they're at, is you're still looking at the different access, not going up Ridge Hill. So if we, buying another year is a good idea because it would give you a chance to flush that out, to have an estimate on what it's going to take to do improvements to that specific road, and we'd have mm -hmm. a better idea because obviously you're right. If it was going to cost you 10 grand the road, you're probably not going to do a timber sale. <laughs> so, uh, but it gives you a little more time. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and I'm not aware of any statutes, but I'm happy to take a peek about timber sales, but I know you don't have an existing policy. Okay. And Chris is right. If you had done this in the past, you would have earmarked that money. I'd like to think they would have put it in a capital fund of their choosing, but they could have just taken it into the general fund. So Definitely. if you put it into the conservation fund, then you know where it is and what it's going to be used for. So. Mm -hmm. Just as an interesting historical point, which I'm always into. I love it. Um, the Quimby Forest in the past, right? I'm not sure the exact date, I would say probably the early 1900s. Um, the timber sale there bought sidewalks in the downtown. Oh, no mm -hmm. kidding. Yeah. yeah. That oh, that's interesting. So sure, that's well, it. Well, on second thought, we want some money back. <laughs> yeah. So there is precedent for designating it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mary. Because <laughs> our sidewalks are looking a little good. <laughs> Oh, well, I think that that's probably exactly what we were talking about it, before. It just went in, back into the general fund, mm -hmm. and then they probably, you know, spent whatever, you know, sidewalks mm -hmm. or something else. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. The interesting part is that there were people behind these names, and there was a Mrs. Quimby who donated the money for the sidewalks. Hmm. Oh, no kidding. Now, with your Quimby, well, where did that go from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so I will add... I can add this item to the next agenda. I'll look at the statutes and then add it into the next agenda. Or do you guys want to wait until 
you have more information about the road access costs before you make? I think the policy <clears throat> is different from the, the specific. I, let's put it, no. I think the designation of, the, or of, the, of any revenue from that sale is different from whether or not what it's, how much it's going to be. Yeah, no, I'm just asking yeah. if you guys want to do it in two weeks or if you want to wait till you have more information so you can see. Well, I, I don't care either way. I'd just as soon see the money go to the Conservation Commission. So, um, but I'm happy to put that on the next agenda. I don't think there's any like. hurry with, you know, we're, I mean, we're a year out from that, so. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, uh, potential uses of that money with what you have. I mean, that might be a good selling point. Mm -hmm. And by then we'd have better, hopefully, an idea on the access point because I think the last time I emailed AJ, he was, let's see, I'm trying to forget. I'm trying to, trying to forget. I'm trying to forget. I'm trying to remember now how you've gone. You guys had walked, you walked Ringe, but did you go the other route? I know there was a question about private property and I put AJ in touch with Carl and I'm not, right. I'm not sure I ever no, remember we've the whole been, We've actually gone on a couple of hikes up there the last year mm -hmm. here, um, kind of confirming boundaries of the forest. Yeah. We've been going up Woodland Road. You have to love Sand Hill. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 much better than Ringe, I think. Going up Woodland? Oh well yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah. closer to town. Ringe is scary. Makes, yeah. It makes so much more sense I think in every way. Yeah. There's less to fix up. Um, you know, all the way to the last house is just a little is because isn't it major repair from a shorter section than the top of it. Isn't it class three a part way out is class three and then it turns to four? Yeah. Is it yeah. after Tim Mills' property or yeah. after uh, and the next property? Past the woods can. Yeah. Past, past the next property. Next property. Yeah. Because they, there's two major landings that were used in the last ten years, one on each side of the road just before that last camp. And they hauled big log trucks in there. Less than 10 years ago, so well, especially if you went in the fall, winter, yeah. you weren't going to do much those roads. Those guys just got to put chains on them. Mm -hmm. I think the logging up in there, you know, we've been working on sand hill and the log trucks coming by. And they took 90,000 feet off of uh, Washburn before Dennis Wood bought where he's camping. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, it makes sense. So that's good. Yeah, Ringe was. I have. Yeah. Well, we've been up there in the daytime. <laughs> no, I was like, Ringe is no, good. I, no way, I'm doing just that. Just rebuilt most of that road there two years ago. Right. Exactly. I couldn't, I couldn't so, find it. Huh? I drove right out in the middle of somebody at Dooryard, and he says, "Where does the road go from here?" And he says, "Well, you missed it. It's back there, about four hundred yards." So I think yeah, that's better. We we also haven't just put a ton of money into that road either, so which is also nice yeah. because if it needs improvements, we we'll, yeah. we know we did in Ringe, but we haven't in Watershed. So that's oh, good. right, yeah. yeah. All right, so we will put this on a future agenda and it sounds yeah. like maybe you'll get those ideas to me about that and we can oh, once you get the ideas together where you want to spend the money we'll put you back on the agenda yeah. and if you want these i signed them so if you want to take them to the landowners yeah. yeah and then if you just bring them back i'll get them recorded in the land records too okay thanks Anything further? You guys are all set, Darren and Chris? Mary? Anything else? Any other sidewalks we gotta do, Mary? Or <laughs> take another? Sorry, I mentioned that. No, I think it's good. <laughs> but I just thought it was interesting. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's definitely something we can look into on, you know, do we leave those types of capital back into, you know, said fund and maybe we could change our policy for that or something. Trails and sidewalks are pretty much the same thing, right? Like right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm looking at it. <laughs> if anyone's looking for a job, we are looking for someone to take select board minutes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just realizing I have to pay catch up here. Lisa has retired so um, from the job. So if you know anyone 
Wants to take select board minutes. Have them get a hold of me. <laughs> no takers, I see. It's a real job. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, it <laughs> sure is. is. Yeah, sure. Lisa was it probably more than being on the board. Yeah, it, it does. All we have to do is make a motion in a second. I think That's it just right. carries the day. Looking for a job right. here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it gets $20, $25 an hour. There you go. $20, $25 an hour. Are there writing could skills? be yours. Hmm. Yeah, see, yes. I'm sure you do. I do the DRB or the PC minutes now for like CC. Okay, I just want to catch up. All right. Kurt, four minutes, three minutes early, you want to go? <laughs> sure. You don't um, have a Zoom call to get on or anything? Or? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, mostly, uh, yeah, thank you for having me. I just want to, to come and, and check in. Uh, as you probably know, the legislative session is done for this year. The formal part of it is done. So uh, this is probably my last monthly visit until January. So I just wanted to, to come and say hi. Uh, this, this session, as I said, is basically done. We're getting together, I think, on the 23rd, 24th, uh, to discuss whether or not to veto, or to try and override the governor's veto on a couple of bills. Uh, but otherwise, we, we, we completed it. We uh, uh, had an unprecedented amount of uh, finances to, to distribute, and as you, as you know, it, with some of the economic uh, development programs of that. That was my committee that we did a lot of that. And uh, um, so, yeah, we, we've been doing a lot of things. And I don't know, is there anything particular that you have questions? You want to know that? If, if not, I do want to say that my plan is uh, once or twice a month to, uh, to uh, uh, stake out a table at the Sanford shop is because now we're going to be able to uh, again, and um, and I'll post it on my page. Look, hey, I'm going to be there for breakfast or lunch or something in case people want to come and and, and, and talk to me about whatever is up for them. And, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, do you have any particular things that you're interested in knowing about, or Has the state figured out exactly how they're going to spend all the billion dollars that's, I mean, I just requested our American Rescue Plan money, but obviously there's a, a bunch of money that's going to be flooded into the state. Yeah. Um, and we've tried to, you know, we've done all we can. I have to say, we've been very lucky. We've got a paving grant. We've got our structures grant. We've got a better connections grant. We've got uh, two better roads grants. So I mean, we're you know we're certainly writing for stuff and kind of poised to see what's out there. And I have emailed you. I've called everybody I know to get my. If there's if there's a place to have your hand out, I have my hand out. But um, I'm just curious. You know, there's a lot of money coming into the state, and I'm I know that the the American Rescue Plan money for us that came directly to municipalities is earmarked for infrastructure pretty much you yeah. know water sewer yeah. broadband etc is that the way that money that the state is receiving from the feds does it have the same constraints as our money or do, were you just given the money and you guys can spend it as you see uh, there are constraints and even as we were finishing up the session we got the latest draft of the, of the restrictions uh, and it was still clear they were, that, that this was the latest draft. They thought it was probably the final draft, but they weren't sure. Uh, but you know, it's hard to try and allocate money when you don't know the, all the rules. Uh, and uh, so, but yeah, most of the state has, well, different, different pots that have different, you know, lim limitations on what it can be spent for. Just like the money that the town's getting, right? I mean, yeah. in some way it goes straight to the town. The rest, then you get this other allocation, which, since most 
in most parts of the country, county government is a big part of it. Right. And Vermont is not. So so they had to figure out what to do in our county uh, designation so that the towns get that also and, uh, mm -hmm. um, and uh, to break that up. So so it's a but it's a very well, it is. So basically, though, if you've had the money, you've given it to the, so you've given VTrans their share and drinking water their share. So basically, as long as we look in, in the right location for our needs, they may have, yeah. they may have COVID, or I hate to say COVID money, but air money or whatever. Yeah. So, okay. Well, it's good to know. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it's great to hear about those, you know, getting all these additional things. Yeah. And some of that is, I mean, uh, being on the Commerce Committee, uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time working with the Agency on Commerce and Community Development. Sure. And, and because of all the things that Bethel has done in the past with the fish and the better block project and, and all those things, I mean, uh, as soon as you say Bethel, they, they light it up. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, so even though that's not the only, just because they light Bethel is the only criteria of why they choose a grant to, or not. Right. But it doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, um, and so, uh, um, yeah. yeah well, my concern is always the concern about the wall itself. And I did speak to, you know, last time, it, look, it has over a million dollar price tag yeah. at, on BJ. We know that. And the last time the schedule came out, it didn't have a date set for repair. They have, the state has bought one house that sits behind it which I'm sure was a smart move for them. And basically we're getting the same spiel, which is it's structurally sound. And um, so I did speak to my contact at B-Trans and said, look, yeah. I'm okay with it being structurally sound, but it looks like hell. So could you, you know, tell me, could you at least come in and refinish it, even if it's like a skim coat, something to make it look nicer? Because Dietrich and I hung a banner up at the top and we got our appropriate, yeah. you know, state 111 Tetanus shot, the whole night. Tetanus night. shot and the state, 111 permit and all that but when you're standing up there looking down it's crazy there's big chunks big missing chunks and, and so i had reached out to him and said look just make it look nice at least skim coat it you know and and uh, so i don't know what sort of pull or if you hear any rumors let me know I, yeah, i'll yeah. do what i can i mean as, as you probably know that's a decade oh i know yeah now. it's true and, and i know the fin the bottom fin on the fish doesn't look nice, but yeah. Lindley and Rebecca are looking for maybe there's parts. We saved a bunch of the original plywood. We just have to locate it, and we think we have the paints. Okay. If not, we'll, so hopefully we'll find Mary Lacey. Replace the bottom <laughs> fin there, to and um, but still it's... And we leaves. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. I, I hide some of the other crumbling parts. That's right. <laughs> um, actually, the state of Vermont, because of Bethel, I've heard that the state of Vermont is working to create either legislation or a policy about artwork. Because when the fish got okayed, one of the they did it. I, I one of the rumor I heard was as in oppose in opposition to their legal counsel because the legal counsel said. You just let them put up fish. What if they wanted something else? Now you've opened this huge can of worms that anybody could put anywhere. So I think because of that, even years later now, their last I heard was they were working on either a state policy or something to say, okay, parameters for artwork on state property. So it's kind of funny that after all these years, it's coming up now. Yeah. Yeah, but are they owned by the state or the There's underpasses the railroad? railroad. Yeah. And this rent, they got rent money. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right across the line. Nice. So, but they're, they're not, they got grant money to do on non state property. Well, I think it's railroad property. Right, exactly. So, which is, yeah, better than state property, maybe. Probably but a combination of both. But it's interesting, yeah. anyways, that it's funny that it's now, after all these years, the state's like, hmm. Yeah, that's part of why I think why the trans was resisted on yeah. the first couple of made to say could we skin code it or yeah. could we just paint it one color or could yeah. we do it because I think they knew that There's no yeah. need for artwork if they just fix it, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> that's the solution. No yeah. more 
No, Halsey's has fixed the wall. Well, well, so if you hear anything, any movement or any ideas on who I should reach out to, just please just email me or call me and yeah. say, hey, Therese, I think you should talk with this guy. Or, yeah. Yeah. I, will, I will try and see Thanks. if I, uh, anything comes up, but I know that they're, yeah, they're a big department. They're hard to, oh, sure. hard to access people. I, I've had other people contact me about a uh, trans thing. Yeah, and I supposed to have secret back doors in some of these places, yeah. and I still get lost and get back doors and stuff. So. Uh, well, I'll call the person I had talked to to say, you know, where have you kicked it up the chain or kicked it around or whatever. But I will say, they <coughs> VTrans itself has been excellent to us recently. They uh, put up, a, they're putting up signage, which I saw. They double gated, which means they posted signs on both sides of the road going up to Camp Brook Road and on on the other side, Rochester Mountain Road, which was nice of them saying, you know, no big trucks. Um, they also uh, patched Camp Brook Road. They put, I think, like maybe four ton of pavement. That was the state. Does that also get changed on the GPS navigation mapping too? Or well, how does that work? It's, that's an act of Congress. I have written to Google, MapQuest, Garmin, I mean, you name it. I sent to a bunch of people and one gentleman from actually MapQuest got back to me and said, here's the secret you don't realize. Everybody operates off the same platform. Same, yeah, Currently, it, yeah. there's not a separate GPS software for big trucks, but they were in the process of developing one. The only one I heard from who actually was going to make any notation was Garmin. Um, I think they're one of the smaller GPS, but everybody uses you know, MapQuest or Google Earth. Mm -hmm. So and they, um, So he was actually really very helpful and said, hey, here's the secret. <laughs> You're not getting this changed until everybody develops this bigger thing. So so we're out there anyways, and, and um, so I, for now. That, that's probably one of those broader telecommunication things. Stay yeah. Actually all on the federal. Right, and then there's a federal website, and so which was actually, believe it or not, helpful and gave me a bunch of links, and I contacted everybody on it, but right now they're kind of running on this one thing. And the gentleman at MapQuest said, look, you know, it's a money issue too. He said, it's expensive to, to do that. So we'll see, we, we did put that out there. So I, I have tried to contact people, but, um, but anyway, so they've, you know, so VTrans has been good to Bethel recently. Yeah. Very good to us. I can't complain actually. So they've been good. And, and you know, like Therese said, you know, we've been very successful on on uh, writing and receiving certain grants. But at the same time, I'll have to say that some of the money that we are receiving for, for our top priority jobs, so, you know, so some of the, you know, two top priority jobs, and we're, we're gonna start talking more here um, as the summer goes at the board on, you know, kind of reprioritizing some of our infrastructure jobs so we can get on to the next ones. But like Sand Hill is a, yeah. You know, kind of a top priority job that we had, um, well, submitted three different grants for, right? I, well, I um, submitted the transportation alternatives, which yeah. we didn't get, and then um, Senator Welch was looking for earmarks, so I Sanders. sent it to him, and he said, and that didn't get submitted, and then I have given it to Sanders, and I actually heard back from Haley last week and said, you know, don't give up just yet. You'll probably, you may not know until October. But, so yeah, it's like three times that we've written it. So that's so. that's going to be a pretty important one to anybody that's driven up Sand Hill. I mean, it's not just the cosmetic stuff that's difficult to drive around now, but you know, there, we have aging infrastructure, and and rather than like Teresa and I were saying, like if we can't get it, like are we going to have to put a bandaid on it? You know, and we would hate to have to spend money just to dig it back up in a year, but we may have to do that just because mm -hmm. it's getting to that point. Um, and then you know we'll start talking about what the next segment of the water infrastructure will be and you know i know you know we're talking another large amount you know dollar figure and depending on what we get for grants or or you know loans and things like that will determine how much yeah. how much we're on the hook for but yeah um so we'll be looking for you know any type of water assistance uh, programs and i know a lot of them that's out right now is new stuff right it, it was yeah the, so we're money was yeah. tagged to new but the new, but not know. maintaining what you have, right? Right, that was a part of it, but I think they've changed some of, that was kind of earlier on, and now it's kind of changed a little bit. The best thing I think that's happening, gonna happen at Bethel, is that the American Rescue Plan money has the lead 
involved, which is great. And I think that's what ended up, because you're right, that's the way they were drinking water was starting. And then drinking water themselves and other state agencies, I think, petitioned the feds and said, wait a second. You've got to allow people to fix what they have, and, and so they did end up loosening. Mm -hmm. But okay. in the beginning, you're right; it was new stuff only, and we're like, oh, no, <laughs> we need to so, fix what we so, have. But yeah, we've been very successful on getting different grants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say all those were the top priority no, grants, but they were. Hey, there. you know, if we're gonna get, we're gonna take the money and use it. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, rather than not receive it and not do other jobs, but. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and you're, you're noting that. October to make it more funds available. In that fact, the legislature is likely to get called back for like a week in October to, you know, because, because the state gets it, but it has to be appropriated. Right. right. So, um, so, yeah, this is, yeah, if it's a way, sh I, you know, hopefully, well, the way he was looking for it was a direct appropriation. So that would be sweet if it was directly. I mean, we get them once in a while, but to come directly to Bethel. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I'm not sure. Third time is a charm. I, that was the third time I submitted that one project. Otherwise, it'll be wrapped up in the next water project, but it would be nice to deal because that's water, storm water, you know, and that's Sand Hill and Bicentennial. So, but anyways, but that'd be great. Yeah, if you hear of anything you think I need yeah. to know, yeah. call me, email me. It'd be great. I appreciate it. So. <laughs> All right, well, I guess. So, you're looking forward to going back to in person? Uh, I mean, or is it going to be a mixture? There are a lot of people that are looking forward to going back in person. I have never been there. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so I'm looking forward to So when you're in person, you'll still wear your headset? Yeah. <laughs> just so that you feel <laughs> comfortable? Just kind of, uh, <laughs> I'm hearing they're talking about opening up possibilities for other public participation via, you know, Zoom or whatever I think the, platform I think the plan it is. is uh, you know, because
<laughs> yeah. But they think you're all powerful, so that's mm -hmm. kind of nice. <laughs> Public comment or inquiry, if there's anything that wasn't on the agenda that anybody would like to bring up, now is the time to do it. Yes. Oh, wait, hold on. I got Owen first. You, you, Doug, you were like just a half a second late. <laughs> I was going to go back to the replay just to see, but yeah, I think he got you. What noon to? Noon to, you know, it's a party, so noon to such and such. But well, you know, there's, don't make someone kick out. There's a, I think there's a time limit on that, isn't there? Yeah, I think it's till four. Okay. Um, after party at Dave's Bar. Oh, nice. Well, make a note. Thank you. Yes, Doug. Yeah, they're all MSHA certified, but um, so just think it needs some bigger material right there. Yeah. All right. I would say that, that the um, trading in stuff for them is the core. Yeah. When you say washing out, is that on the ditch side or is that the embankment side, the other side? On the river side. On the river side, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's two spots there that you get to. One just before the tree and then the, the dirt. Trees are blocked down. Mm -hmm. And then you go up the road before the southern end of the road there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think there's also a spot on uh, Finley Bridge out further. Okay, up further. Uh, what yeah. side? Oh, Finley Bridge Road, just as you pass, what is the guy's just, name? Just past Chris, Chris Heyman. Yeah. yeah. You just passed through Chris Heyman? Yeah. Chris Heyman, yeah. Yep. Somewhere past there, there's another spot that yeah. starting to eat into the road. Okay, thanks. I'll well, and I don't know how you fix this. <laughs> well, sometimes it's just the material on the other side, like Doug is saying. If you're going to have to, you know, bring in bigger material to stabilize the bank, it's tough. Yeah, we did that once before. It didn't work out too well because when you you dig it, to, and the way it's a cold one, we're working the water coming out both sides and being there yeah. at, at the cold side, not running towards the bank side. Yeah. So that's why you may have to wash out that deal if it didn't didn't work. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's tough too because unless they keep Doug, Gene, all right. 
Thank you. Then the Great Wall. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, upper portion of that. Is that getting mowed up in that area? On the top of the wall? Yeah. I don't know, because the state owns one house, and then someone else just bought the other, the red house, or not just bought, but in the last couple of years. So well, I don't know. I would assume. The town that's responsible for the sidewalk up there? Uh, the sidewalk. Is that what we're calling that thing? The sidewalk? That's it. We were up there. I know. Dietrich and I were on that like, a couple weeks ago, and I was like, "Wow." Well, have well, you tell me? Have you guys maintained that in the past? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, the map I can read up here uh, with the comment made by one of the selectmen. I said that it was one of the things that no people wanted to use it, but they didn't couldn't get by it because of the overdraft. Mm -hmm. And I took a couple weekends and got the truck and the asphalt and loaded. No, so I'll, I'll, I'll get it on the list and talk to them about it. I remember trying to cross that when I first came, and it was like a telephone pole and a log, and it yeah, was a bunch of stuff. You're right yeah, on right the other side. The, right at the end That's of a it. ramp. You can't, spot, you can't get a log. You can get a pretty portion of it, but you can't get the right line. Right. That other wall is like being right at the end. Yeah, no, because when we'd come, when I walked up the um, South Main part and then down to the town when I first yeah. came, it was there was – you couldn't. I had to turn around and come back. Right. So that's, I don't know. I'll, I'll uh, talk to Richard about it. Okay. And so he, he probably doesn't know because if Morgan maintained it, he and Morgan didn't overlap. So we'll have to find out. Well, that was the problem before. Everyone said it's state property. It's state property. Yeah. So we, so we don't do it. We, yeah. But, well, that's but, good to know. But if people need to use it, I mean, somebody has to take responsibility to maintain that. Sure. I'll have Richard walk it and, and um, see what he needs to to do as well, talk to them about it. So, thank Before you. Well, the last time I knocked up the town, the gate was responsible. I'm sure that we are, but, you know, it's such a, you know, I, I'm not, I know I never put any thought into it, so I'm glad you brought it up, I'll ask. Because um, I know, like I said, Morgan and Richard didn't overlap, so Morgan wouldn't, or Richard wouldn't know from Morgan. And then yeah. if Alan or anybody never mentioned it, so. Yeah, that, that we'll was find out. Morgan was the one that was saying it was state property. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I can find out. It's not a big deal. I'll ask around and find out. If it's us, we'll, we'll deal with it. So thank you. Okay. Sidewalk above the wall, question mark. Yes, Ellie. We haven't scheduled to put one there because before it was COVID and we didn't have the staff to clean it. So I haven't reordered one yet. I wasn't sure is the if the white church, but for a while someone had told me the white church was open, so people use the bathroom at the white church during the band concert. Mm -hmm. Is that not the case? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's been. I'll have to ask Jean. I haven't scheduled to put one back. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I, I think the band concert started there. I'll ask John Duddy about it. We spoke today. I didn't think to ask him about yeah. it if he feels like it's necessary. I'll give John a buzz tomorrow and ask him. But because um, where I wasn't putting one back in Peavine after some issues we had down there and up there, you know, honestly, with COVID, we pulled them for a specific reason. But I'll, I'll ask John Duddy what he thinks about it. Thanks. Public comment. I'll share a comment or conversation I had with my neighbor uh, Ray on the town side of my house. Um, he and Chris have been uh, weed whacking and so on the stretch between the two bridges, Finley Bridge and the Railroad Bridge, uh, because if it grows up, you can't see when you're coming up under that railroad bridge. Really, there isn't a whole lot of room anyway, uh, but they have felt that it was a, a they couldn't wait until the annual uh, roadside mowing. Roadside mowing. Um, Which was last week, and we sent them there. Was it le yeah. that last? Yeah, well, we had them, and we actually added that. Alan went okay. to meet them to talk to them because Ray okay, had talked good. to Alan. All right, well, yeah. then you've got the message. I just, oh, good. Yeah, no, thanks. I um, just wanted to pass that along. I was out and 
saw Ray and we got to talking and, yeah. and he mentioned that that turning makes sense turning into that bridge that ra under the rig to go under the railroad is real there isn't a lot of room to no. figure out if somebody's coming mm -hmm. and so it's important to keep that down no you're right yeah and, and actually yeah Ray had reached out to Alan so Alan talked to the roadside mowers and um, and and he was I think he was meeting them there to have them do that so yeah. but this thank you the, I saw that it's been done recently yeah I think this is the earliest that we've gotten the roadside mowing done it is it's yeah. kind of feast or famine and usually we're we're in July August August yeah. most August but it was good to get it in early this year. Well, you're kind of at their mercy. So, you know, mm -hmm. he called and he said, you know, you look at you're either at the tail end or you're at the beginning. So, well, plus if you he get was it doing done Rochester, so he can't Usually if you can do it in May or early June, you can avoid some of the invasive species before they There's a flower and seed. Because <laughs> most of the time we end up hitting it right at full. You know, we're spreading seeds all over the place, you know, because it's just the way, <laughs> way it falls in the schedule. Exactly. And so. when I talked to Jason Mitchell, he just said, look, Therese, we're either going to be at the end of the beating. This is just yeah. the way it is. And this yeah, year, because better, last yeah. year was the first time we had used him. So this year, he kind of filled in last year, and he had a hole in his schedule because the mm -hmm. state hadn't spent money on roadside mowing for a while. So we were able to squeak in. And then this year, he said, look, I'm doing Rochester, so you're going to be done in June. I'm like, all right. Yeah. How about it? I think it came out good. I've heard a lot of compliments about it. So yeah, it good me too. Me too. People were happy, so. Yes, sir. Um, quick question. Is there a way to change the clock on this bell so that it actually. Oh, we oh. have talked about this. <laughs> this has times. been a decade. So, yes. <laughs> it's right there. There is. <laughs> there is. And I will ask, because I think Kelly, last time we talked about it, she was emailing the gentleman to come back. Mm. And um, he had come to do his annual maintenance. And. So I think she was going to get him to come back. So let me ask her where that stands. But thank you. That's a What's good eerie one. is when it's actually on time. Mm -hmm. Then something is wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm, it's only an hour and fifty minutes off. Hey, I mean, <laughs> as long as you do the math in your head. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's well. The, what throws you off is the clock is is accurate to the hour, but not to the actual time. And the bell is off by an hour and 50 minutes. And so oh, <laughs> it's like, it's just a total mind mess up. Cause we're like, but <laughs> we'll bring the guy. But it's like almost eight, but it's not eight, yeah. but it's ringing six. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, All right, we'll get the guy. It doesn't guy take back. much for it to get off. Uh, no, and we'll get the guy back. So <laughs> thank you. Well, I'll ask Kelly about it. It happens often. What's the status of that? Anything further, comments, public wise? <coughs> okay. All right, we have uh, appointment of town force fire warden. Okay. Gary came in today to sign. God bless him. He's um, willing to take that on that task. It's a five year appointment. Um, so he is, once, he, once you get appointed, we'll send this to the state. He'll get a big rule book, he'll get a little ticket book, and so things will be taken care of because um, you actually are supposed to submit permits to the state. When you do that, you actually get money back, you know, a money you know, fee for doing that from the state. Mm. Um, so Gary has said, because he's very busy, that he will um, have two people, which I outlined. I think it's gonna be Corey Richards and Jason Rogers will be deputy. Um, Forest fire wardens, and he's gonna, um, you know, sit down. You know, Gary, it's gonna be by the book. It's gonna be correct. Mm -hmm. And I've offered him any assistance by updating the website, things like that, front porch forum posts, whatever we can do to assist him. And mm -hmm. so he was really tickled that he agreed to, to step forward and do that. So, so it would be a motion for a five-year appointment, and the select board has to sign the form. Is, is this the correct one? Um, well, it's the one we got, so we're going to use it for now, and it's the only one they sent. So I, I just crossed out re and put in appointment form, and if they don't like it, that we have a deadline, so I figured we'd get it to them, and we'll see. You would have thought they, if they wanted something else, I would have assumed they would have sent us um, something else. But um, oh, I just realized Gary forgot to sign down here. I'll get him to come back tomorrow. He signed in one place. He took the oath, but he didn't mm -hmm. sign here. 
I noticed there were a lot of uh, requirements, um, knowledge and training and so on. Has he, and I'm assuming he's met all of them, but yeah. I, to yeah. what extent have we checked that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. No, Gary um, was actually a fire chief for many years in the South. Um, he has all the ICS incident command system trainings. Um, he's actually a trainer himself, you know, as far as can teach fire safety and He's actually, I, my guess is, he's the most trained and certified Bethel firefighter currently. Mm -hmm. If not the most trained, he's at the top. Okay. So, and yeah, so he's had the manual and he's been reading. I'd move and still agreed to do it. Okay, move to appoint Jerry Kugler to the Town Forest Fire Warden. Second. Okay, all in favor? Not if it's in, I think it's not if it's in a pit. If right. it's in, in a that containment, I don't think you need area. Fire. No. The only thing we would suggest is that people obviously have, you know, a hose or a bucket of water or something there. Yeah. But the good thing I talked to Gary today is the state, once you become the forest fire warden, there's a, a link and you get signed up like a listserv and they let you know what the burn situation is in the state. Mm -hmm. So that does help. There are times when obviously, if, even if somebody wants to have a little campfire, obviously I think Dave gives them the spiel about water, sand, whatever, making sure um, it's out. But it would be nice. I'd like to have a link to that on our website so people can yeah. obviously see it and say, oh, it's a, you know, obviously it's dry right now, so a high fire season or whatever, so we'll see. But um, it's good to write on those and now you'll have a new person to send them to. <laughs> It used to be, you know, with the fires, it, when you built a containment unit on your property, that it was, I don't think it was a, a law, but usually you involved the fire department or somebody from the fire department came out to check it out to make sure that it was kosher and then you were good forever, you know, yeah. type deal. And then if you had outside containment fire, then you needed a fire permit. Yeah. I don't know. But I don't know. Well, well yeah. Well, well, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure that's the that, case now. So when, when we lived on South Main, we had um, we built a small fire ring in the backyard and had Bob Dean come down and look at it. And he had said at the time, if it was a if it was just a, a pit like the ones that are elevated off the ground, he doesn't need to come check them out. He likes knowing if we've got it. But mm. because we were building it right on the ground, he wanted to just come see it. We didn't need to tell him every time we had a fire in it. Once he checked it and yeah. cleared it, it was fine. But it was sort of the, the, yeah, the way to make it a kosher, you know, mm -hmm. the fire warden knows about it. He said, yes, it's good to go. Right. You know. Yeah. Nice, nice to keep people in the loop. Plus, too, it allows, once you know what's going on, they can call dispatch so that you believe how many calls you get where somebody sees smoke. They don't go there. Yeah, they don't give you direction. They, they, they told just. Me about the one <coughs> the yeah. Well, it's true because people with cell phones will say, I see smoke, but they don't stop. They don't tell you where. And then the fire department's on a goose chase unless somebody knows they've issued a permit. Thank you. So it's, I agree. Okay. Sullivan and Powers scope of services for this, this year. The annual, this is the annual form. They always send you the scope of services every year. Um, and this year the fee is 22600 Okay, this is where my question comes in. I think Linda and I both have the same question. We were informed last week that the town of Royalton just contracted with a different uh, audit firm to have the town of Royalton's services audited for some $13,000. Mm. My question is, what would be $9,000 different between the town of Royalton 
Well, it could be a few things, um, honestly. So I, I don't know who they chose for a firm. So it also could depend on what kind of you know audit they're doing, how much they have in funds versus we do. Do they have? Do they are they auditing just the general fund? Are they auditing, you know, for us when they come, obviously they're doing the general fund, any of our capital funds, any of our, they're also doing the public, trustees of public funds, like the cemetery, they're doing the water, the sewer. So I don't know what their audit entails. Um, it's certainly something that uh, we could do next year as far as, I, I don't think we, we were in a three-year contract. I'll have to see when our contract is with them, but you could always put it out to bid. Um, I have bid before, and they were the, you know, low bidder, especially uh, for when I've done it before. So I can't compare apples to apples because right, I don't know what, know the what they're apples. having audited. Right. Well, that's my question. Is yeah. it worth investigating for $9,000 to find out why? Well, I can ask not for this year because I do believe you're in the I midst of a three-year contract. But yeah, I can certainly the ask. The comment was that um, one of the gentlemen on the board asserts himself as being very knowledgeable. On the BRTS board? Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure if he used that, no, whatever. Right. But he said that you should always dump your auditors every five years, just yeah. seven years. Yeah. And that's a I mean, it's probably the same thing as like, know. Yeah. you know, your whatever, home anyway. insurance and car insurance. Yeah. We used to shop it every so yeah. many years. And, and and now and things have gotten yeah. kind of different. You yeah, know, and I think that you had Sullivan and Powers maybe a, you know, a couple years before I came, you had several other auditors Prior to that, I don't know, I can't remember how long they'd been with you before. Then when I came, I had used them in Bristol. Uh, we'd had the same guy for 25 years, and then he retired, and so we bid it. We got Sullivan and Powers. Does this also then, include, sorry, but does this also include some of the FEMA stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, no, not the single audit, oh, but I mean, anything okay. that you spend under 750000 it includes. So, yeah. If we had all that FEMA... Well, that's a separate. If you do a single audit, it's going to be like seven to, you know, mm. possibly seven grand extra. But that's really because of all the federal requirements of the single audit. But so I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I also believe you get what you pay for because I know other towns that have kind of cheaped out on their audit and then had some problems down the road. But I think we bid it out just like. I just feel that uh, I need to ask a question. I know, and that's fine, Dave. I don't have a problem with that. I just can't tell you because I don't know what they have. Mm. But what I can say is. When I will look and see where we are in their contract, if we're on our third year of their of our three year, then we should definitely do an RFP and see what's out there. I, I, I know they two years ago they gave us a three year contract. I couldn't remember if it was two years ago. That's why and I can't. And remember. then when I see the, the the dollar value, I'm trying to. It's, yeah. Is it is that what we had signed <laughs> up for the yeah, twenty two? Yeah, it was going yeah. to go up like a thousand dollars each yeah. of the years, but it yeah. was a set. We agreed to a set amount that. It Yep. And I know, I mean, if you looked at Bethel there, whatever, three years ago, we were paying like $40,000 right. audits because we were... This was significantly were, lower. Uh, we were so far out of whack. Yeah. yeah. We were so behind and, and not just behind, but, you know, we had a lot of things to audit. And yeah, we were, well, they were, we weren't behind. We well, were just, it was a mess. They were doing all the bookkeeping. So and they were able to kind of get us back on track. And, yeah. And I will say sometimes we do have, you know, they have more bookkeeping to do than, you know... Oh, sure. Like maybe Royalton has established better. Could well, be. I don't want to say better, well, they, keeping, but have, have a person that does that. Yeah, where well, they, 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 they would have before, yeah, because they had Rose Heeman. Yeah. She was, she was great. Right. And Royalton has a really more. different structure. I right. So I, like they have a very different financial structure. They don't do capital funds, they do prudential funds. So they may not be including prudential funds in their audit. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of there's a lot of difference between how they yeah. finance and how it's, we finance. It's a possibility. So. And I also know that the RTS has been unhappy with the price that Sullivan and Powers has charged them. So all along they you know, mm -hmm. so I knew that. They made that clear when I got here and I just said, Well, for now you have who we have and um, but next year, you know, maybe you know, that'll be different. Maybe the BRTS board will say they want to, but it, it's tough until they're, they're so part of the town, we kind of need them, to, we need to be in control of their audit. Um, and that was part of the discussion, but I think yeah. that's sort of, that's being sorted out separate. We just brought up the, why yeah. such a difference? Well, well, maybe the next time you have a chance to talk with them, Therese, maybe yeah, you can well, bring it up. Yeah, we'll be in. I'll, maybe I'll pick their brain on you. what all they're auditing over there and see what the... Well, they don't audit. Apples to apples they don't may or may not be. No, no, I meant you could bring it up that you know, oh, we I heard guess. about 
a different firm auditing them and see what yeah, they're doing or something. Well, I could ask Valparaiso mm -hmm. to share their RFP results if they're willing to do that. Um, but anyways, but yes, Dave, I think that when we're ready, if we're, this is our third year, then we should definitely do it just to see what's out there and see what the pricing is and what it's going to cost for someone to come in and do it. I, I, I agree. It doesn't hurt to check it out. I've got no problem with that. So I'll make a note, contract status question mark, so I can find out. Because if we are in our third year, we can do an RFP. After this year. After this year and see what's right. out there. So we just need a motion to approve the Sullivan Towers scope of services for 21-22 budget six. season. Yeah. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Does good. that need to be signed by us? Or? Yep. Three. Just two. Two separate ones this time? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's one is theirs and one is ours. That's why it's There's two to sign. It's the same thing, but one goes to them and one goes to us. Thank you. And next on the list is to talk about the Equipment Committee's recommendation to purchase a 2021 6590. And associated no, equipment. I give you your own line. Whole line just okay. for you. And the um, so the equipment committee met. Um, people looked. The um, vendor brought up a vehicle. It was kind of researched because Tumbridge actually recently bought one of these vehicles, and, and uh, the equipment committee was looking to replace uh, the one ton. So they'd like to hang on to the one ton because there's not a lot of trade value left in it to allow people to use for training or to check back roads or whatever. And um, so I believe it was Ryan and Alan that saw the, um, this vehicle. They looked through it, and then we got all the specs from them and from Kenco and uh, took it to the equipment committee, and they felt that this was the right vehicle for the town. They were looking for something that was a little bit more heavy-duty than the existing one-ton. And I think I put some information in your packet. They also priced with Kenco. Um, but I think in the past we've used Fairfield, so, um, and they also, I included in your packet, a little updated highway equipment fund. These guys have been great about this, about the money, and, you know, we kind of play with it a little bit each time we talk about it. We realized we didn't have the sidewalk plow in there this time, so we chatted about that, and, um, the equipment committee is having Alan go back and look for pricing currently on a skid steer, so... You can see we have some money in there. Then they jockeyed some things around. And you know, it, it's nice because these guys, Jeff Gilman is one of them, and they go to these big equipment shows that are kind of looking to see what's out there. And, and plus, too, they have the equipment themselves and their operators. So it's helpful to know you have somebody. It's why you have an equipment committee. So somebody knowledgeable is doing the work for you. So um, this is not a loan. Obviously, it's money that's coming to you because it's money to be spent out of the capital equipment fund. And uh, this is their recommendation. The good news is this vehicle is in Vermont. They have one. So, which is a huge thing because of COVID, obviously you're all aware that things are just way out. Mm -hmm. So right now, this is here, um, and we still are gonna have to jockey and position the Tenco. As at first, it was gonna be seven months out just for a truck, and then you're behind even that many more months possibly for the body and the plow. But we're hoping that since if we have the vehicle now, we may be able to jockey a little bit with Tenco to say, okay, somebody else is not going to get their cabin chassis till later. Maybe we can get moved into the rotation. So. We're just 
discussing the truck, the, the skid steer Would and sidewalk plowing yeah. is a separate mm. panel. Yeah, I just, just want to make you know. I just, I, they were both in there, and I didn't know if we were discussing both tonight or. Well, I just realized that, yes, it, it what, um, that I had it highlighted on the, um, well, it was in their minutes because they talk, talked about it, but I also realized that my copy shows that Kubota sidewalk plow highlighted. And so mm. it's just, I just wanted to tell you why they had talked about but I don't think I gave you any information on the sidewalk plow, did I? No. Other no. than no. 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 Okay, other than that, yeah. No, it was just what they talked about at the next meeting. So um, the other thing, too, was, sorry, I should have said this, was the, um, in the minutes, currently there is not a, an extended warranty. However, the dealer believes that an extended service plan will be available well before our factory warranty expires. So he suggests that we budget 5000 for the purchase of that. Later, um, that is something that the equipment committee also said, you know, they wanted to see get the extended warranty. So we're, being, uh, so we're looking for a motion to approve the equipment committee's uh, recommendation. I have one push. quick question. Uh -huh. All this mumbo jumbo here, I have no idea what this truck is because it's a NBVRDSA2 seven, what, blah, 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 blah. What the hell is that? My concern, the numbers are GVWR, Geo Gross Vehicle Wheel Vehicle, Gross Vehicle, vehicle weight. weight Grade. Well, what's a GCWR? I don't know. Um, gross Combined Vehicle Rating. Gross CW. Okay, Gross Combined. CW. Weight Rating, so that's. So I think that trailer. takes into consideration trailer. trailering and. The 19.5 keeps it under a CDL license. Gross CDL license is 24.9 or 25. Mm. No. Yeah, I'm not I sure. CDL is uh, anything over. Yeah, I don't think they're going to need a CDL for this. No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 24. Yeah, okay. Gross vehicle weight rating. Combined. And that's what it's saying. Well, I mean, it, the truck itself, you're fine to drive it, but if you, I don't make it up, if you attach the 10,000 pound GVW the, uh, trailer to it and we're calling a, you know, Kubota tractor on it, then then you would reach your CDL. Yep, that's what it says. You're right. Gross combined weight rating yeah. is the maximum allowable weight of both the loaded tow yeah. vehicle and the loaded trailer. Okay, well, you just are right. Me nuts trying to read these. I know. I just tried to give them to you so that you. And it does. It's Greek to me, but it's what they do, so they understand. So does this push the one ton per GS code outside then? Like, like it's gonna hurt it? it pushes it. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, it pushes it like <clears throat> that far from being obsolete. Mm -hmm. Other than it's got really no value, and they're just gonna keep it, right? Well, they're they're got the inside and the grader outside, so if they can. So got a hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollar vehicle outside. Yeah. So I guess the question that I had, and it's not anything to do with the um, equipment committee, because you know we we empower them to make you know these decisions for us, and right. seems like they're doing a pretty good job. But the concerns I have is looking through the highway equipment fund. I had a couple uh -huh. of questions. So the first one um, <clears throat> in, in the twenty five twenty six budgeting right now, it looks like we have three large pieces of equipment to do. Yeah. Um, and then our fund is going to go from a positive fund balance to a negative to, for a, a, year. to a pretty large negative. So yep, how, do, how do we plan on swinging that or oh. or is it or are some of these pieces going to move again? They could move again. I mean, that's the thing is, you know, you're trying to build a schedule based on maybe it's an eight year retention for uh, vehicles and 20 or something for for 10 to 20 for equipment, depending what the equipment is. And so we've talked about that a little bit to say what's, it, it, it's in a flux. It's a document that changes based on what they're, you know, I was like the last time we had the grader, they had finally. Yeah, that was my second question. They, yeah. Well, they had agreed at the time. They said, look, let's put 10 to 15,000 in the grader to buy us some time. Mm -hmm. And so, which is what they did. So then they pushed it out. We would end up, pro we may have to do a loan. We could maybe just have a down payment for the greater at that point. Because or I think at this point, is you have those three pieces, and exactly. then you have 
you know, four years later, you have the greater. But I guess the other concern I still have is every time we have a discussion about buying something, the greater gets pushed back another year, another year. Well, and it's year. true because then they and talked I about mean, originally that, that greater was going to get replaced like next year, and now it's like yep. 2030. You know, so well, I can tell you the is that realistic, <laughs> or yeah. are we just pushing it out there as a nice place? No, they seem you know to think I mean? it's like, realistic because what they had put, they had said, look, let's have more trucks go through it. They put ten grand into it, and 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 actually Jeff had brought this up because he'd been at equipment show recently. He said we've got to hold this greater as long as we can because some of the stuff that's coming out now, he said, is crazy. It's all it's a really a lot of electric and it's a lot of um, it's the computer stuff that's it's just going to go wrong. He said I think we're smarter to hold onto it this longer. We may be better off putting money into it. So. You know, it's something they have ongoing conversations about it, and like us, you know, they don't have crystal balls. But you can see I've increased 125 to 130 at the top. But it may end up being a down payment. We may end up saying at this point, as we get closer, to say, okay, look, we can't afford the greater straight out. We're going to have to make a good down payment and then take a loan for a few years to cover the greater. We know that's coming. And as far as the Ford F350. The international and the and the loader, they all know. We actually chatted about this, the fact that they were all at once. Mm. And it, my guess is going to be is that one of these is going to get shifted to 26, 2026, 2027. Um, but it depends. You know, the international right now is, is in good shape, and they're maintaining it. And, you know, if they can get another, you know, go either way out of it another year. It also could be we have to borrow money at some point because, like I said, we don't. Well, have I guess that was kind of where I was heading with that discussion, and yeah. it's, you know, coming this upcoming budget season, you know, right. are, should we start looking at increasing the the highway equipment fund yeah, to make up for some of these? Yeah, I think you're right. Four I mean, or five years down the road, rather than have our spike, you know, should right. we start trying to round that if we need to? But again, that's like. Right. Knowing that those pieces are getting done at that time, and that's kind of what I did was took I went to 120, 120, 125, 25, 130, mm -hmm. 130, and then I stayed at 130. Because the whole for a point while, of the whole point of our funds is to try to bell curve it and not yeah. be spikes and valleys. And I just see, yeah, you know, minus one hundred thirty thousand. That right. tells me that you know exactly. we're doing one of these and we want to do this. So yeah. does that mean we need to add some to it over the next four years so that we can? Compass that, or well, I think it does. Or and does one of those pieces get moved, or you know? Well, I think some of it's hard to tell. I mean, it's just you know, I mean, you can see that I've changed the revenue stream to, to kind of to try to be this incremental, and maybe we have to tighten it. But mm -hmm. it's hard to know. I mean, you know, if something isn't an accident, and then you have a deductible, so maybe you you know you have an insurance claim, and then that does something to the vehicle, and, mm -hmm. and so then it's all of a sudden out of the rotation, but. I think this is like anything. This is what they're looking at by trying to. What does the vehicle look like now, versus you know, and how well it's been maintained. So, you know, it's, it's a conversation, and every time we meet, we have this conversation. But the good news is, we're meeting again in the next month or so. So I will speak to them again about this and just say, you know, mm -hmm. I give them this every time, and every time we make little tweaks. So I will be sure that we have a a better or a more in-depth conversation about it and, and just say, look, what do you guys want to do? You know, the good thing is they're taxpayers, so <laughs> they tend to be like, you know, one of them was saying, oh, we should do this and we should do that. And I said, well, if you want to give us a million dollars, we will do that. But currently, we can't. And so, um, but I get what you're saying, Chris, but this is what they came and up with. at the same time, time, we've had our repair, oh, you know, our, our equipment repair line has through the roof. tripled in the last Pretty much three or four years so like you know it's one thing to invest in new purchases having our maintenance line coming down but you know both of them are moving in upward trends and, it's true because you, know. you still are in a cycle where well once the one ton goes obviously and then um this so you'll have two new trucks the international is actually in good shape alan said that himself and that's doug he said doug maintained it alan's maintained it so the, the international is in is in good shape and and he actually said I think we can push that one out so but we'll chat about it again like I said we're gonna have another meeting I think um, if it'll be this month or next but we'll meet again and and talk about it and so. when would this vehicle be in service or
what's the well, timeline on? Well, worst case scenario, it's going to be seven months for Tenco to get a body and plow and all that. It depends with how back they are with COVID. So. On the uh, first of the Fifty five hundred. That's going to be a uh, freight line, three wheels. Uh, this is, it's a Chevy. Um, I'm sorry. It's a fifty five hundred Chevrolet. It's a sixty five hundred. This is to replace the one time. One time, yes, sir. Yeah. So this is, this is to replace the one ton. We were just talking about in the equipment plan, um, capital equipment plan, just talking about um, a replacement schedule for everything. You know, we had, we've done a capital plan for all the equipment. And so what we were talking about was, one of them was the 2017 International. You know, could that go another year? Do we have to hold it? What are we, what are we doing? But I'll give you this, you can look at it. And then I'd you know, love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, you can, that's the last draft that I did with the equipment committee a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, just trying to plan out a long range plan, Doug, for how long they're going to hold stuff, but you can have that. And well, I was just, I was just saying this was, if, if you're getting a heavier, uh, you either need a Chevy or whatever for it to replace the run time. Yeah. It's, you need to look at that, uh, with the weight class and everything else and how much, what type of body is going to be going on it. Oh, exactly. And that's what they did. And another thing, too, is what happened to the, um, the Jimmy? We got a Western Star. Yes. What about the other freight lines? Uh, that's in the equipment. So the um, so one freight liner, yes, we sold, right, or we traded. The other freight liner is should be back hopefully in a couple of weeks. It's at, It was in an accident. That was the one with the body? That was one that the dumb body was damaged. It was an accident. So it has been at Fairfield. I've been saying Freightliner. It's been at Fairfields um, getting um, a new body. Is that going to get traded too eventually? Eventually, yes. But they felt like the cab and chassis and engine where everything was in really good shape. So they felt because of the insurance claim and the body being um, upgraded that it actually would be able to go longer. But And you can see it in the schedule how far they pushed it out. I mean, you I think they. Knock off, you can knock off a great amount of money off of it. Oh, that's good because there's a price tag on it. About well, that's the thing. We, we, we don't really need all the bells and whistles and right. GPS capabilities and all that. Exactly. Uh, no, and then they know that. I mean, that's one of the reasons that one of the members of the equipment committee is Jeff Gilman, and he'd been to an equipment show, and he said, "We don't need all this stuff that's coming out now." He said, "When you, you know, you, we want a greater." simple but he said a lot of the stuff coming out now is like GPS capabilities and then you set the blade and it just goes bad and he's like yeah, it's, yeah. and he said GPS and he yeah. said no and that's exactly what he said his concern is that down the road we are not going to be able to find anything without that stuff but right now it's got a big price tag on it uh, the greater I think they have 410 um, but again it's down the road so but yeah look it over let me know be happy to um, hear what you think. So unless we have any further comments or discussions on this, um, if we don't, then we just need a motion to approve the purchase of the 2021 6500 HD and associated equipment for one one hundred fifty-four thousand four hundred sixty-five dollars. So is this going to be used around town? Is that what they plan for? Is yeah, it'll be like, like they did the one ton for plowing Camp Brook. Yep, that but was right one of the side. things that we talk about. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yep. I mean, the problem with the other one ton is they put too big equipment on it, and yeah, it's it putting more stress on the, the mm -hmm. frame than the frame could. Mm -hmm. That's something else too. Is that mm -hmm. we 
What's going up and down the What's going up and down the road 20 times? The big truck or the little truck? Yeah. Well, we had this conversation last year about that because I told him, no more. I said, you could use this one ton for salt, maybe scrape something off, but it's not designed to do what it's doing. So we had talked about that to add that to each person's route because mainly that's going to be, let's see, mm -hmm. Hazen and where are we now? The gate. So, but exactly that, saying the bigger trucks have got to pick up Camp Brook. I think part of the problem is what are they, but aren't they carrying, they're carrying dirt because they're coming off Camp Valor side roads. So somebody goes back and salts it, but I agree. The big truck should be doing Camp Brook. Well, the little truck should be doing the small cleanups in and around the village and yeah. the small side roads and things like that. Shouldn't yeah. be touching any big, and that was, that's what killed the other one ton was Absolutely. plowing up, you know, Absolutely. Camp Brook. And it had a wing on it. And, and it was, o it, and the equipment was, well, it was oversized equipment for the chassis, and that's what really did, did that truck in. It should never have been doing that type of work. So, I, I, I guess that would be the question: is just making sure that this truck is absolutely up fit, yeah, correctly right. and used correctly, and mm -hmm. that's so that we can get longevity out of it. And that's what these guys, you know, you saying. should see that in the village area, you know, doing all your cleanup and yep. some of those small little roads like up here off of. Uh, North Street, you know, you know, things like that, but. Yeah. See, what, what I've always confused me about it, and, and going back, this is, we had, we had three trucks, it was myself and uh, Rob used to take care of the deck, Dan Banner, and myself, Lisa Morgan, we would take care of all the good the night. And, and Rob would run up and down, sometimes he would come up and touch the snow would be too heavy. So we were running, so I don't, I don't know how we picked up But no, you're right. I think, well, you, the, the big trucks carry dirt, so they're not spreading dirt on Camp Brook. They're playing salt, so they've got to do their roads. They were supposed to be picking it up and plowing it. And then I do think they were salting it with the one ton. Um, probably saved somebody, what, from going back to the shop, dumping their load of dirt to pick up salt to go to Camp Brook. But um, we told them that, you know, they can't be plowing with, they couldn't last year with the one ton. Even once we took the, the, the they could scrape it off a little bit before they salted, but they were not to be, you know, do anything crazy. So I used to use it in natural salt because my tailgate was kept tight and we loaded it to the front door down, salt would come out. Mm -hmm. And as long as I was bugging, it was a new truck and everything was not mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was, I, after I finished my run, I was like, salt up all the damn road. I was doing the, all the damage and stuff. So say timing and, and, and stuff can, can be set. So move. So motion by Gene. A second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Catering license request. American Craft Spirits. It's pretty simple. You've seen it before. If, uh, uh, Pam, is, you just have to approve it. Pam will sign it. Her signature goes on the bottom. You can see. It's funny. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. You guys say approved or denied, and she has to sign it. <laughs> sure will. I like that it's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah, that's just a private event. It doesn't say what it is. So. Yep. Okay, just need a motion for that. So moved. Second. 
Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that one that we have to sign? Or no, Jean. No, I mean, uh, Pam. Jean's Pam. Oh, oh, yeah, Jean. <laughs> We're like sure for the Pam signature. Can you get an invitation? Uh, yeah. <laughs> nope. Right. And then we just, uh, just to adopt the um, local hazard mitigation plan. Which you did before. And, and um, corrections to that. Well, she made the ed She gave me some suggestions. I made the edits. Then I thought I was supposed to have you sign at that point. So I did, and then, because I'd never written a hazard mitigation plan before, and then she, she came back and she said, she wanted me to, I had to do some work on my review toolkit, which was fine, mm -hmm. um, checklist, so I did do that, and then she said, now I need the select board to adopt it. I'm like, oh. I'm like okay, <laughs> like, we've been through this. So I'm like, okay, so this monkey will be officially off my back. Um, so, so you do need a Yes, a we need to make to a motion a to, um, to, for the certificate, for the resolution to adopt, so uh, you need to move to um, move to adopt the resolution for the 2021 local housing mitigation plan. So moved. Second. Okay. Second by Jean. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. So this is the 14th day of June. So y'all need to sign it one more time. Sorry about that. Next time we do it, I hope that we'll have a grant written. Rivers, or someone else will do it. Because that is a bear. And let's see. And Rec Committee had some proposed fundraisers for yep. towards the skate park. Yeah, these are the exact same ones that um, Ellie outlined the last time she was here. Um, she told you about the bottle drive, the duathlon, the silent auction coin drop you had already approved mm -hmm. um so she had already um you know apt mentioned these to you but following the fundraising policy they made an official request um so that's it for the bottle drive so duathlon silent auction question about the duathlon <clears throat> Yep, because if you're the one sponsoring it, so yes, if you're the one sponsoring the the so duathlon. Are you required to have medical staff there? And, you know, you're saying how many are you on there? Well, um, you guys have done a you for years. You did it with um, Forward Fest. You did the five k when you did Forward Fest. Um, I've seen a. For, I've seen them before, and I haven't seen any requirements. The insurance company is not. But, I mean, it would be a good question, though, I think, Ellie. I think he makes a good point. Um, is that something, or let's see, for the duathlon, the swim, I know you're going to have lifeguards on duty. So I know for the swim, there'll be lifeguards. Then my suggestion might be, Paul, because that's a really good idea, a good point is for in the motion for you guys to say you approve the fundraisers, but they, um, the, the uh, duathlon, but that they um, need to be in contact with Warva. So at least they've either, Warva's either there or they have, uh, you know, alerted Warva in advance. I think, I think that's a great idea. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, White River Valley Ambulance, sorry. So I, I think that would yeah, be a good thing to put in your motion. Something else yeah. That yeah, I think that would be a good thing to put in the motion and, and, and be a great way to incorporate other people too. So. so the only question I had on this was, um, so when we built the skate park, we had the extra piece of it that was costed more. Yep, eight grand, about, about $8,000. Right. You mean they had to pay And then back? we had talked about that any any direct fundraisers for the skate park, that that 8,000 or whatever, 8,500, whatever it was, would be paid back prior to any more money going towards the skate park. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. And they've so raised enough money to cover have, that. Was it donation or whatever? Okay. Yep. Okay. No, I, 
just wanted to make sure that that was clear and perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're all paid up. You don't have to send the collectors out to get you. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I just wanted to make sure that was in my brain. So. I mean, I think these are all great. I was, I was wondering why he was asking. I forgot. Yeah, yeah I wasn't here. Yeah. It's like, why is it we just went over this? <laughs> so. Okay. I mean, I don't think you need any, I don't think you need a motion from us to approve these. I mean, well, you have a fundraising policy now, and it says that the board will approve, the board has to approve the fundraisers. So you, what you could do is just, you don't actually have to make a formal motion. You could do it by census. But if you want to make sure that during the duathlon that they have at least made contact with White River Valley Ambulance um, to let them know to put them on alert, then you could at least say that. It's if you don't want to do a formal motion. Your policy just says that you will approve fundraisers. Yeah, uh, so you can yeah, do by consensus. Need to do a motion, but so then you can approve them, but just so you let them have it, but they have to call work. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody in agreement with that? Or? All right. Well, have fun so they're going to fundraisers. Them. Just make sure that okay. River Valley is in. Maybe we can work something out where the constable would be on duty at that time or something could help that too. Or I kind of don't know. War it's always nice to have the constable in around yeah. activities exactly. like that because it might be a little more traffic involved and speeding in the village and all that stuff. Yeah. So, so we'll, um, so that's good. Yeah. So just, um, so before the duathlon, just make sure you've talked to the constable and, and the valley ambulance. So they may not want to be present, but they may at least want to have somebody on standby or something, so what the heck. You may be able to find volunteers that would be more than happy to yeah. provide a little relief tent or shelter. You know, there's always people that are first responder, CPR certified type stuff, so. Oh, I'm CPR certified. Nice. Royalton Transfer Board line of credit. So you guys talked about this at your joint select board meeting with Royalton and Bethel, and then uh, the RTS board has spoken about it as well. So they were looking for a $200,000 line of credit. So I completed and submitted a cash flow analysis to Bar Harbor. I did complete the application and got that to John Duddy, and then John called me today so to ask me a question. Um, about it and I told him that once he got the loan papers drafted I'd send them to the fiscal page and Fletcher for a legal review. He said he doesn't he's gonna need a legal opinion which surprised me but that's fine but we'll still have them review the loan documents. And I also told him I had to go to both towns so it was either gonna have to be two sets or one set with two signature pages, whatever. So we had that conversation today. You know the cash flow analysis did not bear out to two hundred thousand dollars and I did say that to Jerry. I'm like you sure you want uh, but the agreement is basically, it's not like they're going to deposit 200000 You only have to draw what you need. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as far as my understanding is from Jerry, that they'll, <coughs> Bar Harbor will bill you monthly, bill, bill the BRTS board monthly, um, or not the board, bill the BRTS monthly so that you can pay the interest and hopefully pay back any principal that you've borrowed or that's been borrowed. So, um, so anyways, I know Jerry... Uh, that the Bethel board had talked about it and, and um, I said, okay, um, but I said they can't take any, I won't take any action until they mm -hmm. see the loan doc. Mm -hmm. And John doesn't even know yet what the interest rate's gonna be. Mm -hmm. When I asked him today, he's still, wor they're working on it, so. How are we looking at, Rush it off, in regards to the, mm -hmm. the debt that was owed now that we're coming to a close our fiscal they, year out? The last time we transferred money at the beginning of June, they didn't owe us any, mo any money. Okay. And we actually took the payroll money that was coming the next week in advance. I, and I told Jerry that, I sent him the paperwork and said, look, for once you're gonna owe us, you know, <laughs> we're gonna be ahead. <laughs> so you got a payroll coming. So we took, you mm -hmm. know, the same amount we had done for the prior payroll and he 
that's good. So right now, that's good. I know there's some outstanding equipment repair bills and anything else that's going to come in at the tail end, but the last one we did at the beginning of June, um, the BR, the transfer station does not owe the town of Bethel any money at that point. Now, saying that too, we haven't been out of it and I haven't seen the final numbers, but no, she did a couple $9,000 days. I mean, they're still, Saturday was slow when they did five grand, so, but again, I don't know. Do we have another date set for, or can we start looking at a date for going to meeting again? I think we were talking about trying to get together in June or July. Well, I think what the David Barker had said was that they wanted at least three months and that all the subcommittees on the BRTS board were supposed to have all your questions answered within. Like, oh, yeah. That's what <laughs> I thought. Yeah. 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 That's totally happened. It was, yeah. a short of time. it was three months. Yeah. yeah. So I have it on my notes for. Okay. But I haven't made the appointment yet, and I haven't seen that the BRTS board is, um, seems like they still have questions, but. I know um, one of the committees hasn't met yet, and mm -hmm. we're meeting on the 15th of July. Oh, so. there you go. So, <laughs> there's your update, Paul. <laughs> yeah, so I'll make a note, um, but I do have that on my calendar mm -hmm. as a kind of a question hanging out there so um, so is that something we'll see at the next meeting or yeah that that's my that? I'm hoping that you see it at the next meeting that is what I told John was that I would like okay. to have had this the documents then reviewed by the attorney and in your packet to sign I okay. also July 1 we're hoping that by then the bar Har well the bar harbor account will be open because Pam is going to do fill out the sign you know do all the paperwork and then July 1st I'd like the transfer station to start depositing into that bar harbor account then your money started on a fresh um, you know right. the audit years going into into the mm -hmm. new account um, so we need to take action on our next meeting then. yeah I mean just now it's kind of a FYI this is what's happening mm -hmm. and you guys all kind of agreed to, to do it and Jerry had brought up the amount when you met jointly before and nobody everybody understood they needed their mm -hmm. own uh, line of credit so I don't think transferring to Bar Harbor is, is contingent on the LOC. No, no. They're going to Bar Harbor. Bar They're going, BTS, yeah. BRTS is going to Bar Harbor anyway. Yep, and we've done, we've, uh, Jane has, I think, or maybe Pam has, or Jane's getting Pam all the paperwork. I think the account set up, they were just waiting, and we had said we want to start fresh July 1. Yep. So, um, I well, actually. As of right now, we're not sure if we're going to Bar Harbor. No, we're going No, we're sure we're going to Bar Harbor. Harbor. We're not sure we're doing the line. Yeah, but we haven't gotten the interest rate yet. So we're not sure. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Oh, on the line of credit. Well, yeah, okay. right. Okay. Okay. I think you know. that's kind <laughs> of thing. Exactly. So we'll see. But um, so just more of an FYI yeah. than anything else. All right. Okay, so I will make a note right there. So, but at least as far as we know, we're, we're whole. Yes, yep. We were at the beginning of June. We were whole. Um, and I haven't done it since new payroll, but yeah, and they were in May actually. They caught up in May, so it was well, good. Just because it relates to the line of credit discussion, um, Jen actually presented us with some numbers uh, we had requested that she pull from the fee change, how it's looked and what what those numbers had actually played out with, and it actually was really positive. It looks like the fee change is on track to sort of level things out quite a bit and like compost was pretty much covering itself, which is great. Recycling obviously is still going to cost the facility, but we're bringing in significantly more than we were losing, which is, you know, so, so it's not, recycling will never be in a break even, but we're offsetting some of that deficit. So there, there was some really positive news in terms of how we got to this place of being in so much debt and why we're even discussing this. Um, and then the fee change being a one potential remedy to that sort of discrepancy mm -hmm. that was happening in the budget. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's good to see it pan out. I mean, that was yeah. one of the things that we'd recommended when we had done the budget was going to the 170 a ton. I, you know, I'm not sure what she told you. I had cautioned her. I said, you know, make sure that the board understands that when your revenue goes up, they need to look down at your tip, the tip right. hauling expense, because if that money is coming up, so is that expense. So. Right. To see mm -hmm. what the girl and I we did, did, we did sort of talk that. about. Oh, about good. That. So yeah. I had said that to her. Make sure that you know you're mm -hmm. presenting both sides. That revenue's up, but that expense is up too. But that's great about the compost because that's a lot of dealing what? with that labor-wise, pulling the decomp, you know, the bags out that are actually not.
decompose it, you actually have to remove those. So somebody, you know, I think sometimes we forget about the, the labor cost that ties into that stuff. So I was talking that's good. I'm glad to hear about that. I was talking with another town um, that had you know, kind of similar. They obviously don't have their own dump, but they have a small transfer service, kind of like ours, you know, maybe slightly smaller. And just seeing how they um, handle things there. And what they do is they charge everybody coming in, so either by the bag or by the ton, and then to get into the facility. So when you come in, you're at the front gate, you either pay X amount per bag for whatever. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, aluminum can, bottle, whatever, or cardboard. You pay one, you pay up front, and then once you're into the facility, then it's up to the citizen to then dispose of the materials correctly. So, you know how we were, and it just got me thinking about the whole recycling thing because you had, you know, a set fee for recycling, right? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, it's $3. But right. then you don't know, like, is people taking advantage on one end or the other? So, mm -hmm. I just thought it was interesting with this town how they, right up front, they get you when you come in. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. You know, you've got your truck full. We're going to charge you for your truck full, and then once you're in, then you need to deposit your items in your bin, the correct bin of glass and stuff like and that. And they still had people working there to make sure that people weren't just dumping stuff in where. Well, I mean, it's. Or is it the honor Well, someone has I to. I mean, you're pretty much on the. I mean, you have like this. I think they had two people at this one, but I mean, you're kind of always kind of on the honor system, right? I sure. Mean, but. I mean, they do have employees that work there, but... Well, that's good, because if they contaminate a load by something, you lose, mm -hmm. so it does mm -hmm. make sense that they do that. Yeah, I mean, sure, if you move the... I've seen places like that where the the, the um, like scale house is, like, in the beginning, so as soon as you come in, you're... Mm -hmm. you know, you're but I just... I got thinking, because I was, you know, you can have plenty of time to think while you're sitting in the <laughs> figure eight traffic <laughs> circle. Okay. So, you know, I got thinking one time, I mean... Who is to say, I mean, somebody could technically drive in with their recyclables, just deposit the recyclables, drive out. Nobody would ever know that they were even there, right? I mean, could happen, right? So, right? It's difficult with that. In theory, well, I mean. The control machine would be in there, and get in there without. I mean, there's nobody really sitting there watching everybody that's depositing the recyclables in their bin. Well, Wayne is so supposed to, you know. Where I like this theory where they, like, yeah. at the gate, you, they would say, okay, I get five bags, and you would either pay by the bag or you drive onto the scale, and then once you're into the facility and you drove up to the appropriate dumpster, yeah. you know, this is glass, this is cardboard, and you deposit it there. And then you, I guess at least the facility knows what they've got in there. Right. And nobody's mm -hmm. taking advantage of them somehow, so. Right. Because yeah. I think there's probably a lot of, a lot of uh, revenue that we've lost over the years based on that. Then we had, there was a scale too, I don't know, landfill we oversaw, and it was, you know, you came in and you did your recycling on the right, you went over the scale first to go in before you went and dumped, but I tell you, people even then were hosing you because they were hiding tires under brush because brush was free and they'd hide the tires underneath and, you know, it's, I mean, someone's going to get right? you. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> the next one there I mean we okay so opt-in cannabis retailers or integrated licensee establishment so this is a discussion only item but this is something that you will have to will it has to be voted on at the next town meeting um, so we obviously we didn't this year because we didn't have to so we kind of put it off a year because um, you know we knew we weren't going to do it in person I think this is a conversation there's going to be a lot of discussion if watching Randolph's Front Porch Forum and other uh, places as back and forth about it. So I gave you the information I have, and I said in my packet that this is really discussion only. I think we're going to need to come up with a list of questions or whatever, and, and for me, I can do some research because what I put in here for you is, is what I know about it. I gave you what the, um, the motion would look like, and it's you're basically you're allowing the town, the townhouse to vote. So whether basically Chris made the analogy, whether you're dry, it's a dry town or not. 
So if you want, uh, shall the town authorize cannabis retailers and integrated licensees in town, pursuant to the statute, or if you only want to allow only cannabis retailers or integrated licensees, you have to vote on them separately. So uh, I gave you what I had, which is a copy of the statute, and um, a cannabis retailer is a person licensed by the board to sell cannabis, cannabis products to adults 21 years of age and older for off-site consumption in regards to the chapter. Integrated licensee, a person licensed by the board to engage in the activities of a cultivator, wholesaler, product manufacturer, retailer, testing laboratory in accordance with this chapter. So, um, and let's see, I also gave you the other information about the, you know, what you can do. So, Prior to allowing someone to operate within a municipal municipality, you have to vote. Obviously, the vote has to pass. Um, and then it does talk to you a little bit about um, anybody, if we host an establishment, um, you, can es you may establish a cannabis, a cannabis control commission. Um, my guess is you kind of be just like you were you're the local liquor control, liquor so yeah. I would assume you would also become the local uh, cannabis control board. Mm. And so obviously you can issue and administer licenses, just like you do liquor licenses. Um, so it, it's an interesting thing. I mean, obviously it's already, I gave you some sample warning language. It's, it passed in Randolph, Waterbury, a bunch of other places, but my understanding was it wasn't in effect for a little bit longer, and then the state this session was, they were talking about taking it up again, and I'm not sure what they, what came out. I looked on BLCT's website on Friday to see if there was any new information available, and I don't see any. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be one of those, you don't have a choice, you have to put it in front of the voters. I like to be in Australia about Biden. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, because you're not, I, you don't generally vote Australian ballot in Bethel on like zoning regulations and certain things. So I'd have to ask, I, my take is, is the same with Dave's. It's if you are an Australian ballot town already. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. you all know you have the ability at town meeting, someone just has to stand up and request a paper ballot. Sure. So you can, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You could say, yeah. you know. So you could do that. But as we get closer, I'll, I'll have more information because the good news is this was passed in other towns. Yeah. So <laughs> hopefully someone else has figured some of this information out. But sure. you're not going to have a choice. You have to vote it. Well, I think well, this year when we chose to do Australian ballot, I, I remember there were sort of special circumstances. But were those just for this year? And yes. we couldn't adopt a similar situation mm -hmm. of Australian ballot. The only way you, you would have to take that before the voters. Right. So yeah. You'd have that to vote on it. Yeah, you'd vote on it at the town right. meeting 2022. Which and we then have that option. Which would be for 2023. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. So, um, so I'm curious, but, how does it work? I don't know if they've decided yet how the taxation is. I don't think they've decided <laughs> yet. Not, and yeah. will take place. That was what I was wondering. You're not going to get anything out of it. When it when it talked well, about it's, allowing it's, it. It said that they were, the town could enact a local, like a 1%. Yeah, but mm -hmm. the, the thing uh, is. But is, isn't that for everybody? If you don't already right have a local, yeah. you know, so let's say if you're the town of Williston and you already have a localized tax, a tax of 1% or something, you could you could set this cannabis up under that same 1% or you could mm -hmm. make it right. 10% or whatever. Mm -hmm. But being that Bethel doesn't have a localized tax, you know, you would have to, <coughs> you'd have to implement one just to be um, able to get to that. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I was hoping that the state would, just like a liquor license, right?
right? If you get a liquor license, some of that money comes to the town. So I, I think it works. would be the same. <laughs> My guess is we're gonna get yeah. a, a, a fee from like a liquor license, but yeah. right, if you were gonna, that's a, yeah, you're right. Some people do, some people fund the fire department and other things yeah. by implementing a special tax in the village. I know it's also tough on, on uh, businesses when they were trying to draw business to town, they don't want an extra yeah. tax, but, um, but I don't know. I mean, it'll be interesting to sugar it out. I wanted to bring it up to you because it's something we're gonna have to, you know, we're gonna talk about because it has to go in front of the voters. And right now, you know what I know. I, I'm still not <laughs> grasping how this is, <laughs> is going all over the country and it's still a federal offense. Well, it's my a understanding- law. <laughs> Are these states and towns are breaking the federal law. Well, I think and right now- It's not to arrest the people, but it's still a federal law. You know, the only thing I can't figure, well, several things I can't figure out, but one of them in particular is, if you go to the bank with $10,000 in cash, you have to sign this federal form. So the last, I, one of the problems that happened in Colorado was my understanding from talking to a couple of people from Colorado was the people that were, you know, had selling and that had those money couldn't put it in the bank. So they're driving property values up because everybody has cash and they need to invest it. So they're paying all their bills in cash, they're buying property in cash, which is driving it up. So if you're regular Joe who lives there, you know, you're looking at a beat up trailer on a you know postage stamp for 325,000. You can't afford to live there. It's kind of driving you out. So that's my thing is, and, and there was talk, I, I've heard of, I heard about it on the news about this federal government saying, okay, look, <laughs> if all the states are doing this, we may have to leave because they see it, it's a huge tax revenue. They want, you know, they need the money. And so, uh, you know, I don't know, Dave, it's kind of wonder to me is the bank. I mean, I'm assuming that there's a lot of safety deposit boxes out there with a lot of cash sitting in them because if you're putting it in only in $500,000 increments without flagging the IRS, yeah. what are you doing? You know, and how are they getting money if, you know, to get loans? Because you're, I agree with you, I don't know. Oh, I, but I do know it's, you know, until the feds come on board, I wonder how it works, especially banking. But as a local, uh, local identity, when it comes to the town of Bethel, it's gonna be basically no different than the Illinois liquor license for us. Yeah. It, there, it's gonna be, uh, mm. once your town has decided mm. it, if it is to, you know, like we were saying, like be a dry town or not be a yeah. dry town, right? Mm. So if, if they vote positive for this, then it would be, you know, there would be a permit that would come before, you know, but we would now be the cannabis board, mm -hmm. slash yeah. liquor, you know, all <laughs> our different hats. Yeah. And it would be, you know, be no different than tonight. There would be uh, an application and you read through the application and and then you you approve it or not approve it, I think. Mm -hmm. And and all you're gonna get is the small little kickback on the registration kickback. fee, which is gonna be like <laughs> nothing. This isn't getting kickback. Don't look <laughs> you know, at me like that. So I mean there's <laughs> really not gonna be anything for the Here. town to like profit other than maybe there's the opportunity for a business or you know right. the state the state's the one that's really profiteering from, from this. And yeah, unless you're right, unless somebody puts a business in and that business is a draw for people from other towns. We right. know right now that, that Randolph has approved it, but we also know now everybody else around us is gonna have to put it on the ballot. And they probably mm. did what we did, which was said, this is a yeah. discussion we need to have in person. And um, I don't know if you read Front Porch Forum or not, there was a lot of back and forth at Randolph. I read on yeah. Front Porch Forum, if you read any mm. of that, Gene. It was, it was interesting, everybody had a side and a thought and opinion, and, but in the end mm. they were gonna cast a vote so, um, well, we'll keep that and we'll know discussion all open. by then whether or not it's going to go, yeah. you know, I think it's going to be a voice vote, but, um, but if that changes, we'll see what kind of sugars out, you know, the legislative wrap up and all that. It seems like they end and then it takes a couple months for all the stuff to trickle down. Yeah. This mm -hmm. does raise another issue for town meeting thinking, <coughs> and that is whether or not we want to consider all or part of the town meeting to be held Australian. Right, yeah, you have, you I, can I make that determination. A, I think that's something we ought to discuss. Yeah, and you can, it's gonna be one of those things. Somebody could petition for it, um, you know, from the resident or the select board itself could have a discussion and decide whether or not they wanna do it. You can also do, you know, different hybrids. Um, I know towns where the select board, town clerk, all the officers yeah. are Australian ballot, along with the school budget, um, which of course it is now, um, 
maybe any sometimes zoning planning questions, that all went last round of ballot, but their budget was still voted voice vote at a town meeting. So, but then I've seen other towns where they do the whole, like we did last year, the whole enchiladas on. And it's hard because some people feel it really takes away something because how many people came to our budget informational meeting? Yeah. Where is town meeting? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But, but, our, usual, <laughs> our usual audience here. But when you that. have town meeting, <laughs> yeah. you know, you have so many more people. And there's a state law about town meeting and, and work having to give people, you know, town meeting mm -hmm. and uh, so they can attend the town meeting in their community. And so, uh, well, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely a I'd, conversation. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's something to, to consider. Yeah, it's some, definitely something to talk about. There's always, like everything, there's pros and cons and yeah. history and all that stuff. All so. right. Well, in the interest of time, yep. So because that's Dave a, wants to stay here late tonight, he talk about personnel and issues. <laughs> that's fine. So um, <laughs> we'll have more information. Well, this will come up as as, so, as I have it. All right. Anything left on the town manager's report other than the shooting range insurance discussion, or yes. So um, we sold the the case so, tractor sold. Mm -hmm. So that sold. That money goes into the sewer fund, as Mo pointed out when he was a. Uh, Select board member, so it sold for ten thousand dollars. So that's going to go into the sewer capital fund. Okay. And um, bye. Um, I made a request. I had to go online and make a request for our um, American Rescue Plan money. So I did make a request for our first share of that. I met with a roofer the other day who's going to fix uh, town hall. We have a leak over here in the corner, so he's going to fix that. Going to do like a two hundred dollar or so, maybe a little more repair to the town garage because the old addition just abuts to the roof. So he's going to put in some tape there at least to stop it from the rain coming in. For now, they looked at the town office roof. This is my second person who said we do need a new roof on town. The town office. I told him the fascia and the soffit were rotted as well. He's going to come back in a couple weeks or more and give me an estimate, and then I'll just be able to you know, put that out. He doesn't believe all the roof decking is rotted, but he's going to come in and take a closer look. Um, so big thank you to Dave Altringetti because he helped me. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't find anyone to come look at Town Hall, and he gave me a name, and the, and the gentleman was awesome, came right over. And, um, we talked briefly about the shooting range. I were um, at the last meeting, and it wasn't until this afternoon that I actually – We'd been denied our first insurance quote when we applied. The, per the company had denied us and gave us some reasons as to why we were denied. Then we made a second application, and I just heard today um, the, this, this company from Texas is willing to insure the shooting range and actually not putting any caveats in place, which really surprised me because the other company turned us down and said, no, because we don't have X, Y, and Z. So this is a $2 million coverage, um, and we were obviously working through our insurance company, BLCP Passive. For a general aggregate limit of $2 million, um, personal limit, and each occurrence limit of a million, and the premium is $1,330, which is so surprising because they figured, uh, when I had spoken to Vicki last, she said she figured at least five grand. And the, so, and the coverages are on par with what? Yeah, the LCT was, was the one who wanted us to do something about it. And they were going to, I think, have a, I'm not sure they would have covered us, frankly. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I did speak to Skip Griffin this afternoon. And, and he's going, he and Dave are going to come to the select board meeting the last of the month because they do want to see some changes to the rules. So something we can talk mm -hmm. about there. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to move forward with this insurance mm -hmm. policy. I don't really... And this is actually, I couldn't believe it. Um, when I, Texas. Huh? <laughs> They're pro gun. Well, that's what I said. That's exactly what I'm I said serious, when I was I'm looking serious. at they it. Are, they, they <laughs> that's exactly what I said, Dave, when I read it and I was talking to Skip. I said, oh, Skip, here's the answer. They're from Texas. And uh, he laughed. And we, <laughs> we said the same thing to you. Yeah, I'm pretty shocked. That, <laughs> that's a, uh, yeah, me too. It's better than I thought. <laughs> Huh? For a year? Yeah. For a month? Call them up. Is that it's for five year. years? It's a no, it's a, yeah, it's a one year premium. Sorry, I should have told yeah. you that. It's from Jim. Yeah, I was 
You better call back and wheel and deal and see if we can get that down a little yeah. further, Teresa. Yeah, yeah. 614 2021 <laughs> to 614 2022. Yeah. But uh, I, well, I'll tell you, we were sweating it. Um, I also, I told you the tractor sold. Also, I had written letters that were not in your packet to um, two property owners in Bethel, one who had a property that had been, um, you know, damaged in an accident that's been two years since anything's been done that, you know, explained to him the rules about that. Uh, same thing, one building that had had a fire recently. So I sent letters, um, to both of those properties, uh, letting them know that, um, you know, they, there's other processes that they don't want to kick in, so they need to take mm -hmm. some action to start dealing with that. So I did that. Um, I would like to schedule time. I talked to Chris briefly about this. I think we need to we need to talk about a vision financially for Bethel. We realize that um, our next, as you know, we've talked about it. Our next water project is you know 1.7 million. Um, I think it's going to have to go, I think it's going to belong on the entire town for the, the tax, the full tax rate. We're looking at updating the town garage, uh, something that we know with my 600,000 that I had, you know, three architects say no way. I still think there's another option there, maybe bringing in somebody who just does metal buildings to see if they do like a design build, see what we can do. Um, you know, the roof on the town hall is not, or town office isn't a big deal, but we also are going to have two other water projects. So, you know, we're looking at probably seven to ten years, maybe, or five to ten. I want to set a plan with that, sit down and talk to Tim about that. But that's another, you know, seven million dollars, possibly. So, and that won't have to come for a while. But I think we need to, to look at these things. You know, I had a great discussion the other day with Eric Benson, Rick Benson, chair of planning and DRB about talking about um, zoning regulations and that when we do them the next time, that we we need to do some redistricting. And I think that we're going to have to open some more land up for subdivision because we need to encourage some growth. I had a great conversation with Rick and we, he spent, we went through each area of town and how much of the town is already in the floodplain where it can't be developed or where it has conservation easements so it can't be developed. So, you know, we're, need to make room to increase our grand list and, and this may be the way to do it so mm -hmm. I mean I can see you know the short term but I want to look at the long term about how water sewer rates are going to be impacting people and if, the, if we can't grow the system and, and this has been Paul we've talked about this quite a bit is, is it has to go on the entire tax rate and to make it more palatable so that people we can continue to live in the village and have water sewer um, it's all falls together you know if you're living in the village you're paying for grading and you're paying for other amenities that maybe you don't get whereas if you live outside of the district you know you're paying for sidewalks and it's kind of this give and take because we're a community so I just think that we you know I Chris had suggested which is a good one get together a timeline you know obviously I have a capital building plan we have capital roads but to try to put this together in a sort of a financial vision and, and kind of talk about this because, you know, I sweat this stuff every day, you know, looking at it and, you know, or some, well, you should do this or you should do that. I'm like, well, when you give me a million or two million, I'm, I'll put that on the list. But in the meantime, we need to make it affordable for people to stay here, but yet we still have to fix. There's some stuff that's been neglected. So while people maybe not current residents, but maybe their parents have been able to take advantage of the fact that they've had a low water bill or a low sewer bill or a lower tax bill. But those things that weren't being taken care of at the time, you know, it's we're paying the piper now and are going to be. So I just think it's a, something that we need to look at, you know, as a whole and, um, and have a conversation about. So I, um, I figure you can worry about the same thing I worry about. <laughs> so, I think it's something we, um, you know, but I'd like to schedule for a board meeting and try to pull some things together so that we could kind of sit down and maybe right. just look at the same financial picture together and put our heads together and, and see what our, you know, thoughts are. You know, we kind of manage pieces, but mm -hmm. let's look at it. So, no, so definitely. That is, um, I think that's it. That's all my notes. Perfect. Oh wait, wait, you did read my good news, right? That we got the paving grants, mm -hmm. that we got a structures grant, paving grant, so it's good. And 
that's all I have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Select board meeting minutes from the 24th of May. Any questions in regards to those? Are we good to approve as written? Bye, Ellie. Thank, thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Perfect. Other communication yeah. is kind of an assortment in here. In there. Yeah, and I so there's a lot Lots of minutes. Rows. <laughs> I did give you a copy of the notice we put out for the water project. Yeah. Um, I also gave you, I don't know if everybody reads the Herald, so I gave you a copy of the equity and inclusion um, interview. So, um, mm -hmm. I just wanted you to be able to see that because I don't think it's the paper. Notice of road closure. And then, yeah, there's a lot of minutes. Um, flipping through, something else. So, the uh, town DRB in the PC, or well, the PCs meeting this mm -hmm. Wednesday night. This Wednesday night, we're meeting. And um, basically, going to be approving Rick and I wrote this. This big the amendment, the town, the plan you have to make, you know, to go to the uh, select board and the PCs looked at it once. Or, you know, we, no, we chatted about the changes, and now you, I sent you guys the report. Okay, I'm trying to remember Jean how we did this. So we're going to talk about that once they approve the report. Any changes, then the PC will set their public hearing. They'll have their public hearing once that goes, then they will submit it to you. So you will do your public hearing next on any zoning amendment. So that's also coming down the pike for you guys. So I'm if anyone has any questions about anything else in their packet. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other business to co come before the board before we enter into executive session? Well, just a comment on the packet. Uh, I would have appreciated the article that was in the recent Herald. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. You know, I had seen that before, but that was. That's that good. Was, that I, was, I a, that was a heads up for the town. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was nice. I mean, Dylan, I wanted you to know what I said. Obviously, I tried to, you know, represent the board. And, uh, but Dylan was great, I have to say that. Um, I asked him in advance for the questions. He was busy, I was busy, and, and I, we had a nice discussion about it. And he had, I knew he had seen Jesse and Owen, and, um, and then obviously he talked to David. So, um, but yeah, I thought overall the article was good. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to enter executive session for personnel discussion. I'll put the statute in later and I don't know what else is So moved. Good night, Doug. We got a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. And we are in. My daughter's like, are you coming home? Yeah. I'm like, I made the mistake tonight of saying I'll be home around eight. Oh, no. <laughs>